<laughs> okay, this time the microphone didn't catch me off guard. We're back! The way I played yesterday, but I just couldn't resist anymore. I played for the last two streams, uh, pretty much chapter one again, uh, episode one again, for the people that hadn't seen it, but I had already played it. But after playing that again, I was so hooked that I wanted to keep going into what is for me a new episode again. For today, we're going to into the adventure of the cloud at Kokoro. Yes, I know it sounds dumb, <laughs> but what, whatever the case is, I think that we are going to have another fantastic case. I just can't, I, I just can't wait. Now, if you don't mind me, let's go. I don't even know what I just read, so I'll just keep. Can I be here? Perfect! The Adventure of the Clouded Kokoro I begin to think, Wilson, said Sholmes, turning his head languidly in my direction, that there is more to this case than that which we have observed. Indeed, that there may be another part to this story that we are yet to discover. His eyes wandered following the steam rising from his cup of herbal tea, leading him to the distant memory of that snowy evening. To the young lady collapsed on the pavement along Briar Road, and to the knife in her back. Wow, that's brutal. Lit in the soft glow of gas lamps, a most extraordinary scene had been set. And under the cover of a light fog, the curtain had risen silently on the insoluble mystery of our invisible killer. Here we go. Hey, we're back here again. If I remember correctly, this is where the main, the, the Lord of Justice, yes, Lord Chief Justice Office. Um, sit down, sorry, I'm just... Much better. Did you sleep last night, Mr. Narujudo? No, not at all. It was an enormous hotel, wasn't it? The rooms were so luxurious, I felt like we were staying in a palace. And with all the cast lights twinkling, it was brighter than day even in the middle of the night. What about the enormous beds? After my time on the SS Buria, I wasn't going to waste a single inch of that space. I spent the, na the entire night rolling from one side of the mattress to the other. Oh, Jess! It really was the sort of night you can only dream of normally. Wait, didn't you say that he didn't sleep? Oh, he didn't sleep. So, it sounds like he's enjoying this, but... Was it? Oh, yes! It really was the sort of night you can only dream of normally. Oh, right, I don't need this one. Except... When I learned that we owe three pounds for the rooms, that dream quickly turned into a nightmare. Oops, sorry about that. The building was so impressive and the entrance so inviting, I just... wandering without thinking. In a lodging house in Japan, that sum of money would put a roof over your head for a whole year. I did try. But I'm afraid I couldn't help my tears when we were presented with the bill. <laughs> Uh, I really am sorry. Well, never mind. We must find some more affordable lodgings. Oh, is it actually a plane? Well, never mind. More okay, yeah, it is a plane. Oh. <laughs> well, never mind. We must find some more affordable lodgings straight away, though. If we're not careful, our entire, our entire spit, stipend, stipend? What is that? We'll be stopped in 10 days or less. Ugh, London's a scary place. Ah, oh, good morning to you at this early hour. That's... Oh, oh yes, we, um, well... Good 
morning to you, Lord Chief Justice. We have come to report to the outcome of the trial at the Old Bailey yesterday. Susato-san is amazing! Oh. Work correctly, there it is. Susato-san is amazing! She doesn't bat an eyelid, even in the presence of the imposing Lord's, Lord Strongheart. Yes, I believe you had a very comprehensive initi initiation into British courtroom practices. Oh, yes, it was very eye-opening. Thank you. And in accordance with your instructions, Lord Strongheart, Mr. Narujo performed his duty to the end. Yes, I've already been apprised of events. You conducted a remarkable defense. You may consider the test passed. Oh! No longer are you a student from the Empire of Japan. You may henceforth claim to be a fully-fledged lawyer! My country is delighted to welcome John Talon from such a remote eastern land. Um, thank you very much. So I'm a lawyer now. Now, in view of your new appointment, I have a fresh case in mind for you. I'd like you to take it all at once. I trust that won't be a problem. Another case? Already? Nothing trains a lawyer better than practical experience. Hmm. That is very different from the original series. I'm sure. I don't sense dissatisfaction, do I? It's just that yesterday's trial ended... initially. I haven't quite come to terms with it. What's good to come to terms with? That demand was clear. What more were you hoping for? Yeah... That is scary as heck. The culpability of the defender has not at the present time been established by this court. Consequently, the jury will not be required to prefer judgment. Well, Urban Six, it's been a pleasure, so it has. And as for you, my dear fella, I couldn't have asked for a better defense. I can't believe that I still remember how to do this voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that didn't feel fair. I just can't help wondering if Mr. McGilder really was innocent. Mr. Nerogdon! It's just that I never managed to ascertain the truth. And then the trial ended. Well, you didn't let it trouble you for a second. Sorry? What do you mean, Lord Strongheart? Magnus Magilda passed a whoa! -ho 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 -ho. So it was him! Holy shit! Oh my god! Magnus McGilded passed away immediately following the trial. No! What? Mr. M Mr. McGilded is dead? That was creepy. I have 19 minutes and 41 seconds until my next engagement. Time enough to talk. Anything new? Hmm, I think it's the same thing. Okay, just in case. Just look at all the naughty books packed together on these shelves. They go from floor to ceiling. And they're all books that you couldn't hope to come by in Japan. It's like a dream. Yes, a very bad dream. But I guess not liking books comes from the family, huh? They're not all British law either. There are books about the judicial systems of other Western nations. France, Germany, Spain, Holland. What about Russia? What do you ask? 
I was wondering about asking the Lord Chief Justice how you say water in Russian. Oh, so it is the same. What do you think? I think perhaps it's a thought best abandoned. This is some kind of clock. Actually, I think we might inside some sort of giant clock. Okay, those are the same this conversations I'm here. But those leaf chairs are larger than anything you find on a steam locomotive, even! Siri, do you think clocks are some sort of hobby of his? The Lord Chief, Ch the Lord Chief Justice, I mean? Well, boys do enjoy fiddling around with machines, don't they? I'm not sure you could fiddle with cogs this size. Hmm. And I'm certain you couldn't call him a boy. Still, it's amazing how little noise the cocks make, considering how large they are. There's actually something quite soothing about their precise rhythm. Tick, tack. Tick, tack. <laughs> Look at them in ice and pedal giant facing each other. Oh god, they really are the same conversation. They're gonna say that they're counted and stop. Okay. Let's see if there's something different. Just. Oops, that's not the one that I was looking for. It really is the same. Yeah, I'm losing time here. It still says Kasuma Asuki. That's very sad. Lord Strongheart, may I show you this? The WhatsApp this item, issue received, examine it regularly, and make up to a statement of my findings. Would require something in the region of 24 seconds of my time. Sorry? Does the item warrant 24 seconds of my time, Mr. Naruhodo? Let's leave it for now. Okay, let's actually converse about this. I don't understand, what happened? How can he be dead? After the trial concluded yesterday, there was a great commotion in the Old Valley. Bailey, as you presumably recall, an omnibus had been wheeled into the courtroom. Yes, of course, that was the scene of the crime which Mr. McGillan had been accused of. Precisely. Well, while the bailiff's attention was diverted by some other manners, the omnibus went up in flames. Ooh. Ooh, <laughs> that's bad. Mm. There it again. I just hope that this isn't affected the computer. It feels like it's going a bit slower than usual. Okay. Keep it up. As it was diverted by some other manner, the omnibus went up in flames. No. How could such a thing have happened? What is being investigated as we speak? But already. The police have identified a corpse found inside the charred shell of the carriage as that of Mike McGilded. That's so full! The man must have slipped inside while the bailiff's attention was elsewhere. That bailiff really needs to pay more attention! And how could that have happened? That is also being investigated as we speak. Thinking back now, immediately after the trial, Mr. McGillard did mention going back into the courtroom to look at the omnibus. Well, they must be making tracks now. It's time for the inspection. Sorry, what inspection? They're going to examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. I asked if I could be present for it myself. An inspection of the omnibus. 
Not to my knowledge. I don't believe Scotland Yard had any intention of re-examining the carriage. But then who was Mr. McGill? Mr. McGill they're talking about? Never mind that now. The Yard is making a, pro in a through investigation. The matter is no longer in any concern of yours. Leave it to the police. That's and that's right. Poor Mr. Kim, I killed him. So, how did you find your first taste of our country's supreme court? Oh, well, um. I don't know. I mean, it was. Wow! Mr. Naruhado means that the whole experience was stepping the solemnity of the Great Britain's long history. It's really a world apart from our own judicial system in Japan, which is only a few short decades old. Wow, so Sato san has such a way with words. Men just seem to have a way of failing to find the right ones. I mean, he only thought. He only thought that. The judicial system here is the most advanced in the world. Learn all you can. The most advanced in the world, is it? It was fortunate that your very first trials was a simple affair. Simple? That was simple? As I believe I mentioned yesterday morning, it was a trial you couldn't lose. I don't mean to be the contrary in long strong heart, but the case was anything but simple. The circumstances of the care were so incriminated, I was stunned when I first heard them. In fact, I'm still finding it hard to believe that we managed to get a favorable ver verdict. <laughs> is, is something funny? No, no, my apologies. However, the fact is that you did receive the not guilty verdict you set out to achieve. And that can only be attributed to exceptional talent, wouldn't you agree? Well, I don't know about that! Well, never mind. You exceeded my expectations, I freely admit. That much at least is an undeniable truth. Which is precisely why I have prepared the new case for you that I mentioned before. What's going on? What was he going to say before? Could you perhaps give us some more details about the new case you mentioned? Don't tell me it's a murder and the trial starts in 10 minutes. Don't worry, it's nothing so alarming or quite as, as urgent as your last assignment. In fact, this case is completely different. Oh, I see. Did, did he just read my mind? That is to say, Noah has died. As yet. And the trial will not be today. There is plenty of time to research the case th truly. Th through. There is plenty of time to research the case truly. 23 hours, 43 minutes, and 19 seconds to be present. That's still tomorrow. To the trails tomorrow, then. Uh, is everything all right? Oh, yes, I'm just a little confused, that's all. Yesterday, the trials was. Well, it's left me wonder if I'm really cut out for being a lawyer. Mr. Narujo, 
I don't know if I could face standing in that courtroom again after Matilda's trial. Oh, yes, I nearly forgot. There is one similarity with yesterday's case. Once again, there is currently no one to advocate for the defense. Oh! If there remains... If the situation remains unchanged, the trial will start tomorrow with the defendant unrepresented. And if that happens, I need not remind you of the inev inevitable, inevitable outcome. The most terrible end awaits the defendant. Yes, that's right. Here we go again. Oh, <laughs> I actually said it myself. Uh, here we go again. I wonder if... Wait, if I have a day, that means I'm gonna have an investigation segment, right? Your time is up. You will have to excuse me. I would advise you to begin prepare making preparations for tomorrow's trial. Hmm. After all, the clock is ever ticking. We go again. There is now about 23 hours, 26 minutes, and 39 seconds until the car sets. Oh my god, he's so obsessed with times, it's just ridiculous. What is he, Von Karma's ancestor? Last time he mentioned the 23 hours, he said that it was plenty of time. And one more thing, Mr. Narukodo. There is something I should like to ask you. Uh, um, what's that? Yesterday, you remark upon something. Take that! Oh! <laughs> Chicha just scared the heck out of me! Yes, thank you for presenting your like as evidence, Chicha! <laughs> I, will I will put it into the current record that you intend to see through the will of your late compatriot, Mr. Asuki. I would be interested to hear what exactly you mean by that. Inside 34 seconds. What? Oh, well, um, uh, Kazuma always used to say, you see, that he wanted to learn how the greatest justice system in the world works so he could change ours in Japan. Now that he's gone, I'd like to work towards that myself, and there's another. Wait, is that. Oh my god! Sam. Now that it's gone, I'd like to work the words out myself, and there's some another thing. Oh! Another thing? Continue. On the way here, on the steamship, he said something to me. There's nothing... There's nothing very... There's something very important I have to do. Something very important? And what exactly would that be? He never had a chance to tell me. I suppose he would have done if he'd ever made it to Great Britain. You're out of time! Time's out! Well, thank you for enlightening and enlightening discussion. Mr. Narugado, what's all this about? Mr. Asuki never once mentioned anything on the sort to me. Uh, well, best friend and stuff, you know. Are you sure to focus your attentions on the matter at hand? I've taken the liberty of summoning the police inspector in charge of the case. Oh, this is the guy that was in the fire! He'll be able to apprise you of the details. How long has he been there? Actually, yeah, when did he appear? So I wish you the best of luck and bid you farewell. Let's try to remember his voice from the clip. Okay, I got it. There's something very important that I have to do. Kasuma sama, what did you mean? <laughs> wish I knew, but honestly, he never told me. Anyway, we had better talk to the detective, don't you think? Yes, you're right. I hope I'm just imagining it, but I want to say he looks pleased to see us at all. What does he have in his... What's that? Oh boy. I'm starting to worry about my controller. Um, could we trouble you? <laughs> What is eating? That looks delicious. I want one. Wait, what? Okay, let me see that animation. How does he keep summoning them? What do you think? Huh? Um, uh, lovely weather, isn't it? What's the weather that had to do with anything? 
Uh, listen to me, young Japanese upstart! Some flippery about the weather doesn't get every English gent in and out of your hand, you see? Uh, but Susato told... Susato-san told me it was foolproof. I'm a busy man! A very busy man! Uh, there's crime scene to investigate, but if you're having the like to give the likes of you a talk. There's a crime scene to investigate, but I'm here having to give the likes of you a talking to. My god. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. Can you imagine what the other officers there will be saying them? Um? Haven't seen Gregson anywhere, have you? No, oh, he's too busy with the big wigs these days. Gregson? I know, because of some bumpkin who's here that on a jump from a country I've never even heard of. It's very hard to say that. Uh, maybe this voice I chose isn't the best choice, but i already gone with it. Hear that ripping sound? That's my reputation of the chart going to tatters! But there's no need to rip us apart as well. I don't believe we've been introduced. This is Mr. Renosuke Naruho, though, a defense lawyer. Uh? It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm Mr. Naruho, the ju judicial assistant, so... Uh? It's lovely weather we're having today, isn't it? <laughs> you got distracted by the beauty? You got distracted by the beauty. It's insensible fine, I grant you. London winters don't see a lot of sunshine. Just out of curiosity. Don't! Don't even think about it! <laughs> you freaking detective! Don't even think about it! She's 16. Unbelievable! How did she pull that off? So, um, Lord Strunker has asked me to fill you in on the case. My name's Tobias Gregson. Inspector Gregson to you! I'm from Scotland Yard! Gregson? Um, Inspector Gregson? What's the matter with Susanna Sam? Does this detective's name mean something to her? Inspector Gregson. Inspector, are you perhaps <gasps> the Inspector Gregson? <laughs> You're acting like you know this man, Sato, but he's a London detective. Oh, I do know him very well, in fact. Very well. Yes. Features prominently in the adventures of Herlock Holmes. Herlock Holmes. Oh, in that publication? What's it called again? Rents Magazine? That's right, Inspector Gregson and Mr. Holmes enjoy a wonderful friendly rivalry. Really? You rival the great Mr. Holmes? That's incredible. Uh, um, well, I don't know about that. Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes isn't a professional like myself, of course. But he does come up with the goods from time to time. Mr. Schultz is equally complimentary about you, Mr. Inspector, isn't he? He earned his highest praise. Gregson is the pick of a bad lot of all the Scotland charters. Those were his own words. That's his highest praise? So basically, he's the better between all of that bunch of morons. Well, Mr. Schultz isn't particularly known for giving compliments, you know. That he is not! And thanks to that magazine, my name's known all over my London town now! That's... great, isn't it? <laughs> I have to admit that to start with, I was a little, well, flattered by all of attention. Everyone wanted to shake my hand. And my reputation at the jar went through the roof. Well, that's wonderful. No, it is not! There is nothing more sinister than the man on the street! People are always looking at me now! They're whispering rumors about me under their breath, I'm sure! Rumors? Are, aren't you quite sure? He's changed since he started appearing in those stories. Names come to his head. Stuff like that. Gosh! Do you really think people are saying such mean-spirited things about you? Like I said, whisper, so I can catch exactly what they're saying, but I know what the folk are like. I'm sure that's what they're saying! I'm sure as X is X. I get a feeling this detective could be very hard work. As a matter of fact, 
Oh god. Oh dear. Perhaps a sudden that rise to fame does change people. Oh. Or that. Alright. Can I not present anything to him? No, I can't. So, um, about the case that the Lord Chief Justice mentioned before. Nothing to tell, really! As far as we're concerned, the jar, it couldn't be simpler. Hmm. Oh dear, that probably means that as far as we're concerned as lawyers, it couldn't be more complicated. I wish you were wrong about that, but I have a nasty feeling you're right. The young woman was walking along the pavement on Briar Road when she was stabbed from behind. Oh, like in an opening. Fortunately, it wasn't fatal, but she's still laid up in the hospital unconscious. That's despicable! What sort of coward would attack the poor woman from behind? I suppose you would have finished whoever it was off with a Susato takedown, wouldn't you? That is neither here nor there, Mr. Narujodo. Brace yourself, Rinosuke. Back her here now. <laughs> I have never seen that pose. Anyway, there's something of a whirlwind investigation, the criminal was arrested. He barely had time for a cup of tea after the incident took place, to be honest. So, there must have been something left at the scene that led you directly to the culprit? Or perhaps a reliable witness who recognized the person in question? Let me stop you right there, you're wasting your time on this one. Sorry? There's nothing you can do. There's no way to help the bloke now. Bloke? Why ever not? Simple. The prosecutor that he's, that's been assigned to the trial tomorrow is Lord Baron Ben Six. Oh, him again? No! I like you've heard of him then. Uh, yeah, we actually have gone against him. Yes, we are very familiar with Lord Ben Six. Believed to be the harbinger of death itself. The Reaper of the Bailey. Reaper of the Bailey. Lord Ben Six. Lord Baron Ben Six. Lord Baroque Ben Six. Who we were facing court only yesterday. Mr. Makilda told us about him before the trial, didn't he? Oh, that's right, this comes from my Gizmer Gillard. When Ben Six stands for the persecution, they call the accused they say sacrificial lamps. And in every single trial in which he's been the prosecutor, the accused has been them. Huh. It doesn't necessarily mean that they went to prison, I'll think about it. This Ripper of the Bailey nickname... I suppose he's earned that because every defendant he advocates against is... <laughs> Hello, Liu! Hola, Liu! So you've come to be watch the fourth case again? I mean, the, the first time, sorry. You've come again to watch the fourth case. That doesn't sound good, when, however I want to say it. But you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. I suppose he's earned that because every defendant he advocates against is found guilty, is that it? Well... <laughs> good play, good day! Well, if that's the case, we should inform you, Sp Inspector, that in yesterday's trial against Lord Ben Six, Mr. Naruhodo secured a verdict of not guilty. Huh, and what of it? Huh? Well, um, I, I think... That means that even against the Reaper of the Bailey, it's not impossible to save the defendant. No, you really don't have a clue, do you? What do you mean? What happened to that bloke in the end, eh? He's dead. Huh? Magnus McKilded came a cropper in that omnibus when it went up in flames. But you can rightly say you saved the defendant, can you? Oh my god, they're not talking about him finding every defendant guilty. They're claiming that every defendant that's gone against him has died? What are you saying? Look, when Six could get the dirt there's if Ben Six could get the dirt to stick on everyone, he'd be a miracle worker. But that's not how it works. He doesn't work miracles, he works magic. Black magic. I have a good long think about that. If I were you. This is scary as heck. This is scary as heck. We're supposed to believe that? 
I want one of those. I don't know what he's eating, but I want one of those. Right, well, I filled you as soon as requested. Very nearly out of chips. So I'll be heading back to the crime scene now. We're still carrying out a few investigations there. It was Friar's Road, you said, didn't you? There were the incident took place, I mean. That's correct, ma'am. And if you head over to the holding cells, you can meet the criminal himself. You friended him a criminal already? He's as good as chicken like a leaf in his cell he is. He'll give you a chuckle if nothing else. He's inmate 53. Get to the jailer and he'll show you the way. Inmate 53. Thank you. So there's no helping anyone against a reaper of the Bailey, they say. Because they died? Is something trouble you, Mr. Narujada? To tell the truth, when I recall the trial yesterday, I can't stop myself from shaking. The idea of facing the reaper in court against is... <sighs> well, if you think it's too much for you, there's no shame in turning the case, though. That takes courage, too, you know. But if the man they've arrested is innocent, you could well imagine he would be shaking like a leaf in his cell. I for one wouldn't find that the sight of that funny. So, I'm honest, I'm still reeling really from the shock of yesterday's events myself, and I'm really not sure if I'll be able to help this man, whoever he is. But I'd like to try. I think I'm going to make some inquiries. Will you help? you had to ask. After all, I am your judicial assistant. <laughs> Thank you. So then, shall we? Yes! Let's go! That must be so adorable. I always fell on edge here, but there are so many interesting books I wish I could borrow. Oh, that's him. We still haven't been here. I wonder what awaits us. So, the scene of the crime? Or the suspect. End of the crime. Grand Street. Prayer Road. So this is where it happened. Briar Road. Ah! Look, Mr. Narujudo! Look at that regulation metal helmet, it's unmistakable. Oh. Look at that regulation metal helmet, it's unmistakable. The men of Scotland Yard are here. They're investigating as we speak. That, that is their job, you know. But Mr. Narugado, you see one with my own eyes. They're often depicted in the adventure of... <laughs> God, she's a fanboy. There are standards fixed in the adventures of Harold of Shams, but I never dreamed I'd ever come this close. You're a real Bobby's helmet! What? The helmet? <laughs> of course! I have to try one of, on one day. Well, I uh, hope you hate. I hope your Hattie dreams come true. <laughs> Hattie dream. Hmm. I don't see Inspector Gregson anywhere. Shall we see if we can sneak past an investigator scene of the stabbing? Why should we sneak? I don't want to upset one of those wobbies and be potted out of their head by one of those metal helmets. My school would crack in too, I'm sure. Oh no, an English puppy would never do such a thing. This is a land of gentlemen, you know. They really have a lot of expectations from the very British police. And I know more than one person who will go like, Yeah, that's not exactly that good. I mean, they're very evil and the police have the police. That's a rather typical little bit pinling, isn't it? I'm sure it has a long and interesting history. Well, time certainly seems to have taken its toll in the place. It's crooked and sagging all over. In fact, it looks like it's in decidedly worse shape than the other houses around here. Is it an old building? We must find some cheap lodging ourselves as soon as possible. Yes, you're right. Cheap but utterly uh, with reasonable level floors. <laughs> Whoa! What happened with this bike? Oh, a British bicycle! Look! Although, the wheel is so misshapen, I'm sure it couldn't possibly be ridden anymore. 
Someone must have been doing some breakneck cycling. It seems bicycle have become extremely popular in London recently. They still are, are they not? There's even a movement not to change women's dresses to allow them to ride as well. The bicycle fad won't last. I don't see why anyone wants to ride something like that. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Goodness, did you dislike bicycles? No, not at all. I mean, it's not that I dislike them at cycling. Okay, he does just. It's just that any occupation that involves taking both of your feet off firm ground seems reckless. I just remember something. Mr. Wright actually ends up going on a bike to his first case in the anime. I don't know if it's the same in the, in the games. As a matter of fact, I don't remember him going on a bike in the games. But in the anime, they give him a bike. And I mean a bicycle, not a motorbike. If you've ever tried walking on stilts and falling into a ribbon, I know you'd agree with me. Well, we'll have to hire a bicycle sometimes. You can see it behind me while I ride you around. <laughs> oh. Whoops. There it is. The clouds look so big and heavy in the sky, don't they? And with the dense fog as well, everything looks hazy. Well, it is known as Foggy London Town. I can just make out some sort of spire through the fog. It looks like it's still being built up. Aha, yes, that must be the Crystal Tower being built for the Great Exhibition. That's to open in six months' time. Hmm. Even the thing on the right? Because I actually clicked the... Big round tower, but... The thing on the right looks actually like it's being built. Also, it's starting to look like the game is gonna go into there. Apparently it's going to be very striking, placed on all sides and the symbolic centerpiece of the exhibition. It's to be the largest exposition in history, is it? I can even begin to imagine it. Hmm. There are piles of snow on the pavement here and there, but the road itself is covered in carriage tracks. It seems carriages often travel down Briar Road. It soon disperses all the snow. I slipped over when I was walking down the pavement earlier. It seems like it would be far safer to walk on the road instead. Oh, but you're rather small, Mr. Narukodo, and dressed only in black. I worry coachman might not see you and you could be gladdened by horses. God, that's brutal. Well, thank you for the rather small concern. Oh, look at the windows on that building there. Are you sure they're windows? Yes, but they're all filled with bricks. Oh, you're right! I wonder why! Perhaps it's an empty property where nobody lives at the moment. There's smoke coming from the chimneys, though. Hmm, that's kinda weird. Oh dear, everything still feels very foreign. There's so much we have to learn about this, this place. I like that they're really not doubting a lot of things because, uh, because of how... natural it feels for them. How unnatural everything is. What is this? Do you see all the black smoke rising from the chimneys over there? It says here that in Great Britain, many people heat their homes in winter is in cold. The only chimneys I really remember seeing in Japan were on top of the bathhouse. Do you think some of those houses could be on fire? <laughs> what? Not at all. Well, even so, that much thick smoke billowing up to the heavens is surely going to turn the whole sky black sooner or later. Global warming! You may be right about that. Global warming! Okay, let's keep going to the right. In the news, the Metropolitan, William Robbins. That sounds familiar. And let's see what this is. Oh! That's Colin George Carish! They use basic vehicles like that to rush to the crime scenes and cart away criminals. You're very well informed, aren't you? It's long been a dream of mine to ride one of those through the streets of London. Well, just pick up a stone and throw it through one of those windows in. You would be a criminal and they would take you away. But that would mean being arrested in order to ride it. Wouldn't it? Still, if it's the only way... Help me find a good stone! Oh my god, what is she thinking? No, 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 I wasn't serious! <laughs> oh, 
look at this. This is cute. <laughs> what a delightful snowman. I didn't realize the English had a tradition of making snowmen as well. It looks a little creepy though. Oh, it has a scarf. Look! You did one if you were out in this freezing cold all the time. Kinda wish I had one. I'm afraid our budget is somewhat frozen at the moment too. We certainly can't afford a scarf. God, they're very poor. Surely the snowman here wouldn't miss his. Okay, okay, okay. So being poor and and riding bicycles is a tradition of the of the right agency. Got it. Do the snowman here wouldn't miss his? But the person who made the snowman certainly would. Yes, I know, you're right. Anyway, even if it bore it, I wouldn't do much to warm my neck, wouldn't it? It's covered in snow. That's a good point. Okay, we checked pretty much everything. Now let's check every person. Oh wait, there's some, something else. This patch of payment must be where the incident occurred. Yes, it's a very wide open space, isn't it? That's true. I can see anywhere an attacker could have been hiding. Oi, what are your foreigners doing here? Huh? Oh, uh, um, we, um, uh, just investigating a uh, You're inspiring with that mustache fella from Japan, are ya? Inspiring? Come here to destroy evidence of ya. Get out of here before you give you the knitting. Go on. Okay. Shoot us away like rats. Yes, we should give him a white berth, I think. What a disappointing experience! I talk to you? As one of the officers from Scotland Yard, the police are making sure their crime scene is undisturbed. I have a feeling that if we wander too close, we'll be clapping irons. I think perhaps you're being a little overcautious. We've done nothing wrong, so we have no cause for concern. Oh no, I'm not getting caught out again! This is enough! Twice I found myself in handcuffs despite not knowing a thing about what was going on! Yes, you've had some dreadful experiences. I'm sure it's that what I'd look of panic you're supposed to. It does you no favors at all. <laughs> okay. We investigated the crime scene, but nothing actually came to mind. Let's go to the prison. Are you sure we got everything we need to when he's turned out of the Hmm. That question is always bad. But I guess that we cannot do anything right now. Whoa, is this a... This is creepy. Local prison sale 9. They don't have a visitor's area, they literally have a, a... Also, those chains. So these are British prison cells. Oh, they're ghastly. It feels just like a dungeon. Yes, I have an experience in Japan myself. I can assure you that the wooden cells feel a lot cozier than these cold stone walls. Oh, tell Mr. Neruda, you're making it seem worse. Oh god, she's adorable. Apparently your client is in this cell here. But it's so dark at the back there, I can make him out. I wonder what he's like. Inmate 53, your legal representative is here to see ya! Stop hiding in the back of the cell and show your face at once! Okay, actually, I don't know what voice to give him. Am I? Am I a cat? Ah, uh, shit, with no name? Calling me by a number. It is unbelievably, unbelievable, unjustly unreasonable. I refuse to answer. Mr. Neruda, what? What do you think is going on here? I have no idea. But I wasn't just hearing things, was I? That turret of complaints was in Japanese. Whoa, what? I was not expecting that. That theory of complaints was in Japanese. Those eyes are scary as heck. 
Tobias Gregson, by the way. He's a star and single man and he's a person. A great lover of... Those were fish and chips? Um, excuse me, but who... Sh sh quiet! They're all around! Hiding! I know they are! They're watching, are listening, even now, I, I can sense it! Um, uh, right, so could I ask you... Wait a sec, there you are! You've come to curse me, haven't you? Don't try to hide it, you're a ghost! A ghost? We mean you no harm, prisoner Sam, aren't you? Japanese by any chance? Oh, that changed his position completely? This is... This is... Did you my wildest dreams? <laughs> That's very good. He looks terrified, by the way. Forgive me for that outburst before. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's it's fine. We're just a little surprised, that's all. Imagine it! I've been it's been twelve hours, month. It's been too long, small since I left my hometown, and here I am, a frightful face in a foreign land. So here in the sweet, sentimental tones of a compatriot's voice here in this damn dark hellhole was, uh, was a most monumentally moving moment. What the heck is wrong with this guy? Oh boy! Who could have guessed that this new client, Lord Stronghart, assigned to us would turn out to be a fellow Japanese? Oh, what compassion my fellow countrymen show! To dispatch a first class lawyer all the way from Japan to defend a mere foreign student! Double nurturing, never failing, Nippon! Oh my god, what is he, a Jojo's character? A first class lawyer? Oh dear, I think there's been something of a misunderstanding here. I wonder, would you be so kind as to tell us what's happened? Why you been detained as a suspect, for example? Yes, yes, I can, I will! Shit, stay solid, and solid! What the heck is wrong with you? I don't know what to say! I'm not quite sure I understand what he means, but he seems happy. Yes, he does. I hope he actually has a good reason to be. <laughs> Let's... The stickers? What stickers? Oh, wait. Did you try to send something? Oh, ¿qué stickers quieres decir? <laughs> Thank you for your cooperation. I am, I am a lawyer, as you said. My name is Yunosuke Narujodo. And I am Narujodo San's judicial assistant. Susato Mikotoba. I am. I am a visiting student sent here by our government. Edible, notoriously named Natsume! Nosuke Natsume. <laughs> oh god. Dear lord. Am I going to represent a just a JoJo character? Just, just the symbol of one of our great and favorite lawyers, which means, of course, you'll stand by my side. You'll defend me. Oh no, sorry, that wasn't why I was showing it to you. Then why else would you show me that? Oops. In hindsight, that probably wasn't the best idea. What is wrong with this guy? Sasuke san What an initial name! Call me Sasuke, please. I'm a poet, you see. A writer of haiku. Oh my god, is that what he's doing? It's something of a nom de plume. A nom de plume? You mean an alias? That's right, Mr. san 
Please tell me he does, he's not named Naru uh, just Billy Bob Jones like the last time I had somebody with an alias. No, 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 no! Don't be so prosaic! I much! It's much more refined than that! And Haiku? That really reminds me of home. Did I hear you say you were a visiting student sent here? Oh, sent over here by the government? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's right! A year ago, I was told to go and study English. First, I had to suffer that misery. And now this! It's beyond the pile! Suffer that misery? You don't want to study here? No, I mean, I have an interest in Great Britain for some years, of course. Oh. But just because the government tells you to do something, does it mean you can do it? No! What do you mean? If they told me to study English literature, that I could have understood. That's my field. But no, they told me to study the English language. Utterly, unbelievable, unjustly, unreasonable! <laughs> I see. <laughs> Only the other day I was told to send a report about my first year here. I turned there a blank piece of paper. Why is Warsaw whitewashing? <laughs> what is going on? You must be a fan of great standing. Oh, yes, so I'm often told. And often like to be told, it seems. God, I'm going crazy at this guy! Oh my god! Could you perhaps tell us exactly why you've been arrested, sasaki -san? I didn't do it! I didn't commit an atrocious murder! Murder? Oh, no, 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 it's alright. That woman didn't actually die, did she? But she was stabbed with a knife right before my eyes! Before you rise? You mean you saw the attacker? I didn't see anyone. What? If I'd seen that person who did it, do you think I'd be longer by here? That makes sense. Oh, dear, it seems that this case is becoming rather complicated. Why me? Why me? Why did I see the woman have to be stabbed in front of me? It's the curse! The curse of London! It's... Incredibly, and exclusively, irritating, inconvenient! <laughs> so Sasuke said, was there at this... God, I'm losing it! I'm just losing it! <laughs> Maybe I should use this guy for some new alerts. So, so Sasuke san was there at the scene, but he didn't see the attacker. It's final that we find out more about the case! About the case. It was an accused evening, just after the snow had started to clear and heavy with fog. I'd been to the bookshop to buy some books. I was on my way back to, the, uh, to my accused lodgings. Sure the, book sh sure, the book sure, the bookshop wasn't accused? As I was walking along the accused pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman wearing a green overcoat, she was. Just as I went to overtake her. She's round. She suddenly let out a little scream and collapsed on the cold, hard slabs of stone at my feet. How, how terrible! I called out the poor woman, but she didn't move. It was like a costly, golly, grim. Great chart! <laughs> Glad it's a generation there, perhaps. I mean, the guy is passionate, that's for sure. I was terrified. I had to get away from there. So I ran as fast as my legs could carry me back to my accursed lodgings. That's not good. Well, they'll say it was shameful, I know. Turn away like that. Tell me, Soseki san. Was the victim in a question of yours? Don't be ridiculous! Do you think I know any of this fair haired English? And a young woman at last, at that? I'm defiant, shy, timid, and sure! 
It's I can talk to people. I can see that. A young woman known to Susekisen. At the time it happened. Who else did you see nearby? Did anybody pass you? Regrettably, apart from myself and the woman, I didn't see a soul. No one? Great. The depicting was unknown to you and there was nobody else on the street at the time? That creates something of a conundrum, doesn't it? Hmm? What conundrum? Well, there, for starters, there will be no more yet. What do you mean, Suseta san What's the conundrum? Why? Well, if what Suseki san had just told us is true, there's something I can explain. He says that he didn't know the victim, and that there was no one else at the scene. Then he apparently fled without having been seen. I did, I did! But if that's the case, surely this man has to be the culprit? Ah, you! What did you say? Nothing! I didn't say anything! Oops, perhaps I thought that a little loudly. <laughs> Actually, that's not what was troubling me. What I was thinking was, how did Suseki-san actually come to be arrested? Hmm. That's a good point. Sorry? He didn't touch the victim, and there was nobody at the scene to see him. So how did the police ever discover that he was there in the first place? Oh, yes, he's right! Wait, actually, I haven't thought that. Did you come and report the crime scene, buddy? Now that I think about it, this game does deal a lot with racism. I'm not gonna like this answer, right? It... it... it was him! That appears great detective! It led the police to me! Of all the bad luck! That appears great detective? Could it be? I'll never forget that man's name as long as I live. With his hasty, haughty love and his self-proclaimed greatness. Oh god, it's Holmes. Holmes. Crush! Big hit and busy body, be gone! Of course. May you be cursed until the end of your days, Herlock Holmes! <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Herlock Holmes. I, I, I knew it. I love this team. Mr. Shorms? Her luck Shorms. Well, I didn't expect to hear that name from this man's lips, that's for sure. It was the morning after the nightmare had unfolded on the pavement before me. I was gnawing on a sliver of hard cheese when some men suddenly burst in through the door. They started shouting at me! This is the police! Put the weapon down! Yes, it was a thin sliver, yes, it was hard, but I wasn't needing a weapon! <laughs> this goes to die and discrimination doubles! <laughs> they thought the cheese was a piece of knife or something. You clearly had a trying morning yesterday. And there he was! In the middle of all the policemen grinning like a cheeshire cat. That hair luck shows! It's it's actually just hair luck It's English. I've since found out that he's a famous name in detection here in London. Yes, the great detective is really very well known. And his overly sharp man managed to deduce my whereabouts apparently. He thinks I'm the knife welding madman! Man, this week's top stooped killing of a man! I wonder what great deduction process led him to his conclusion this time. You mean to say that Mr. Oshom's deduction was the only reason the police arrested you? That would be really most unreasonable. Well, um, the thing is, uh, yeah, so about that. I was, I was thrown into a panic when they barged their way in. Of course you were, that's only natural. I was terrified and trembling, and they kept throwing question after question at me, and impossibly English. British foreign flame flammery! Flame flammery? So that's what flame flame comes from. Well, we are in England, you can really blame them for questioning you in English. Good 
point, good point, but my mind went blank. I knew I had the answer, but I didn't know what to say. So I just keep repeating things like, yes I do, and I'm fine. Then I think I knew I was in manacles, and before I knew it I was truly here. <laughs> do you admit that you served this woman? Yes I do! Are you fine with that? I am fine! Oh my god! Did you, were you in this street and stab this woman? Yes, I do! Yes! <laughs> oh my god! Oh dear, I'm afraid that's hardly surprising. I'm fine? He's not fine now! Mr. Arujo Squire! Uh, oh! You can just call me Narujo, though. And when we're speaking English, I miss a simple Mister is more than enough. Oh, yes, I'm all right, yes. They've, they've really got to me. Contrast is poison in my mind. But please, I beg you to defend me in court tomorrow. You can tell them what really happened. You'll do it, won't you? Well, um... Why? Why? Why is it too high to say just to me? Well, the thing is... Just a student like yourself, when I studied her. A, a student? I've defended the case in the Old Bailey. Only the one, though. But at this moment in time, I really don't know what I'm supposed to believe in. I'm confused about what justice in this country means. I'm not blaming him. After what happened last time. Oh, naruhodo san I'm not even the foreign student who was supposed to be here. I'm sort of a Lockham lawyer, I suppose. Lockham? What does the Lockham mean? I actually need to check. A person who... Oh! A substitute, pretty much. But... But that armband! That's the mark of a defense lawyer from our great empire! It's a Kipsy from the man who should have been here. He was my best friend. A Kipsyk? I know exactly what they're saying about me. Huh? What do you mean? The lawyers. All the British defense lawyers. They won't defend me. Goodness, why? Why do you say that? For the same reason as you noted before. When it happened, there was only the victim and myself around. And I ran away from the scene of the crime. I'm not a fool. I know it looks as though I must be the culprit. It must be very hard for you, Sasaki Zen. And anyway, I'm a student from overseas. I'm just a foreign nobody to them. Somebody not to be trusted. I hear them openly laughing about me before, in my earshot without any compunction at all. Ah. Any trial for this man would be a waste of time, they said. And of course the foreign did it. They even had to say, the call to say, the man doesn't understand half of what is being said anyway. That's awful! They're wrong! I've studied more English than half of the policemen out there in the streets! I've traveled halfway around the world to learn about this people's country and its great history! But no one here wants to listen to a man with a strange accent. They all hate me. I should be talking with a strange English accent? So, at the very least, I'd like to entrust my faith to someone who can listen to me in my native tongue. You could do it, couldn't you? When I look into your eyes, I can see it. I can see what you've been through. Seki-san, it's just that... Give me a little time, please. Hmm? I'll do what I can, for the time being. What do you mean? We shall investigate the case as truly as possible. If we can find some clues, it will give us a much better chance, I'm sure. Oh, Jess. Jess, thank you. I'll be here all alone waiting for you. Welcome, student Mr. Naruto Squire. 
We should be going there, Maru, for the same. We have a case to prepare for. I don't have anything to show you except for the armor. And let's keep moving. Okay, now that we have his permission, I don't know, maybe. Okay, there's nothing here. So only the Briar Road is the only place that like, we can go right now. Okay, it's time to talk with my throat. What's the Japanese delegation doing here? Oh, Inspector Gregson! This isn't on the tourist trail, as I'm fairly sure you're well aware. Yes, of course! We're here to investigate. Did you mean to hold the holding cells in? What'd you make of the criminal? He's not a criminal, as you put it, Inspector. He's a suspect. Hmm, we'll see about that. You, Napa, you Japanese like to stick together, I suppose. Well, do what you will. It doesn't bother me. The blood's in court tomorrow, whatever happens, and the verdict's a foregone conclusion. Ah, the stone cold air of rejection. Hey, Charles, London at this time of year is full of stone cold air. That, make us, that makes it worse somehow. Okay, we cannot check this yet. So, I guess there's nothing else to do, but. Hey, have you seen that I am a substitute lawyer? Inspector Gresson, can I show you this? Am I supposed to know what that is? I've never seen that insignia before. It's worn by defense lawyers in the Empire of Japan as a symbol of their profession. In other words, it's a wordless trinket here in Great Britain. Oh my god, that's incredibly brutal. Oh no, it's very important to me. It shows my spirit. An English gentleman keeps things like his spirit very much to himself, I have you know. Oh. Don't give up, Mr. Naruhodo. It's it's too late, he's crushed my spirit already. <laughs> oh my god. Look at this badge, pretty much. Tell me about Scotland Yard, Inspector. Ever since I read about it in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, I've been fascinated by the place. The Yard is the most sophisticated police and organization you'll find anywhere in the world, ma'am. Oh, and you know, I always dream of wearing a real Bobby's helmet. Oh my god! It does make them look the part, seeing that policeman there with his, with his helmet on. You certainly get the sense that this is a man who will take no nonsense in the history of protecting the city. Chess, doesn't he look wonderful? Being a London Bobby is hard going, I can tell you. Oh, really? First thing in the morning, you know what he does. Goes round and rouses all the laborers in his bits so they can get off to work. What? He wakes people up? Yep. Taps on their windows with a long pole. And myself going back a bit. I have no idea. Wait, 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 wait. So there's... There's somebody that is pretty much functioning inside a freaking clock alarm? The Bobby works for the people of town. Just another one of his duties. After that, he starts tirelessly patrolling the streets all day long. He has to cover 20 miles a day. That's the regulation distance. I can't really imagine how far that is, but it's not like a long way. I wonder if they have to do it by foot, by the way. Let me see. That's approximately the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama. What the heck is the distance between two cities? 20 miles is not actually that much, though. I mean, wait, no, 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 no. Tokyo and Yokohama are not that far apart at the point, but I think, I think so. Wait, but I'm thinking in, in new age. On foot? That's, that's definitely taking a things a step too far. And when it gets dark, of course, he has the important job of lighting all the gas street lights. Oh my! And, as, and in supposing between all of those duties, Bobby starts expected to investigate cases as well. And chase after criminals trying to pay the law. I'm not sure you could call it in between exactly. Or alongside, but yes. 
They're expected to handle those jobs as well. I have me killing over from time to time, I admit. Yeah, that sounds like incredibly brutal for one person. I'd always dream of wearing one of those helmets, as I said. But it's with a heavy heart. I shall have to relinquish that dream to you, Mr. Naruto. <laughs> Your heavy heart will be my heavy head if you do. It happened at around 5 in the evening two days ago. Just there in that open bit of pavement. The victim, a young woman, was stabbed with a blade from behind. Is it right that the lady is still unconscious now? You mentioned that she's being treated in the hospital. I never said she was a lady. Truth is, unless she comes around pretty smartish, which you wouldn't be able to find that much about her at all. I suppose I haven't been able to take a statement from her, of course. Here's the map of the local area I happen to have with me. You take it if you want. Really? Are you sure? It's a your policy to give lawyers defending suspect the odd bit of information to go on. That is much, much different from the original series. I'm happy that they actually are acknowledging that I need the information. I haven't actually accepted the job yet, but still. Thank you, Inspector. We gratefully accept. Anyway, as far as we know, there was no one else with the same other than the victim and your fellow countrymen. So who did it, do you think? Not much of a hit scratcher, is it? Well, I know Mr. Natsume is also claiming enough to not have seen anyone else around, but... But just because he didn't see anyone... It doesn't mean we can be sure that nobody else was present! I'm sure you have to tell you. Most certainly can be sure. Let me guess, steps on the snow. Because, ma'am, the precise moment of the stabbing didn't go unnoticed. It will what? We have two very reliable witnesses, no less. Oh! A typical foggy London day, and your client obviously didn't see them. There were witnesses now? Who are these witnesses, Inspector? A fellow and his wife. And the man's one of the most reliable and respected citizens in all of London. He's a copper from Scotland Yard. Oh god, this is very bad. A policeman? That might change things. And this policeman just happened to be there at the exact moment the woman was attacked? Nothing peculiar about that man. Part of parcel of being a bobby, etching them bang in the act and all that. Um, do you think it might be possible for us to ask the policeman a few questions? I guess. You can ask him what you like. In court tomorrow. What? I've no doubt he'll be someone as a witness. So that'll give you something to look forward to. That's that then. He's got no intention of letting us meet the man beforehand, it seems. A police a policeman witnessed the incident. As your judicial assistant. I must warn you that this could make your job very difficult indeed. And yep, normally, if this is similar to the... No, this is actually been throwing me for a loop. But most of the time when there are a person in a position of power, or in the actual law enforcement becomes... is part of the witnesses. It kind of becomes a, fa a matter of pride to them. At least it has come in the past like that in the other series. As your judicial assistant, I must warn you that this could make your job very difficult indeed. Yes, as a non-judicial assistant, I could have warned me of that too. Oh yes, one more thing, Inspector. What? The person who led you to the suspect. I hear that was Mr. Herlock Sholmes. What are you bring him in up for? Was it something I said? The color has drained from his cheeks. Or that. Calabash Road, Merchum Street, Friar Road. I imagine this one must be. Thank you again for this. Mm, don't mention it. I had someone at the jar fish it out for me, but in the end I didn't need it. Oh? Well, the case could hardly be simpler, could it? You need a map to work out what happened. You can throw it away when you're done with it. Ugh, cold. Mm. 
I'm gonna turn on more because uh, the inspector's voice is actually kinda hard on my throat. He's um, what was his name? Tobias Gregson. Tobias. Gregson's voice is actually kinda irritating to my voice. I I know it sounds perfect and I want to keep doing it, but I'm gonna need more tea. And now, we wait for the water to be ready again. Let's keep going. Mr. Shones. Hmm. Who did you hear that name from? Oh, well, um, it was Mr. Natsume who mentioned it. He said that Mr. Shon was with the police when they entered his lodgings. I'm sure it was the result of one of Mr. Shon's inspirational great deductions. Fiddle faddle! Demon's an amateur, and I'm sick and tired of him showing his mug everywhere. Oh! I don't know where he gets his information from, but he turns up at the scene of the crime. Wonders around spotting incomprehensible rubbish, and before you know it, claims to have solved the case. Yes, he's quite astounding, isn't he? He's a great help to Scotland Yard, though, isn't he? Gibble gabble! Ever seen Stimpy's before? Oh, yes, that's Rance Magazine. The wonderful publication in which the adventure of Mr. Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes appear. Yes, well, that wonderful publication, as you put it, sees fit to include several of the jar detectives in these stories. And the so-called great detective made a mockery of all of us. If you ask anyone at the yard, it's a misadventure to be including any Sherlock Holmes tale at all. Ugh. Well, I suppose there's an element of that. We work our socks off, every one of us, only to be thrown by the public thanks to that obnoxious detective. This man's as dangerous to us as Scotland Yard as he is to all our criminals. Um, that can't really be true, can it, Inspector? Clearly the great detective and the police have a complex relationship. That Twitch Japanese bloke goes on trial tomorrow. Are you going to defend him or not? Well, um... Mm -hmm. Make no difference to me, but I will just say this. No London lawyer where his soul would touch that case with a barge pole. Because the prosecution is being handled by the Reaper of the Bailey, you mean. There's no way to save the man now. The ways of them crying. It's all a bit strange, though. Sorry? The Reaper. He hasn't appeared in court once for a good few years now. Yes, we did hear something to that effect. And the only people that he usually bothers with are the real scum. The master criminals. The violent ones. Master criminals? With the violent ones? That's right. He can't fix his victims. Only deals with those warranted to go to the gallows for their sins. But Mr. Natsume wouldn't hang for what he's accused of, surely? 
That's just my point, Sunshine. Yes, the young woman was stabbed, but they didn't kill her. You didn't even say the intent was there. So this isn't the sort of case that is respecting the Reaper to want to sink his teeth into. For what? much faster than I expected, but okay, let's go back. Okay. <laughs> this is it. So this isn't the sort of case I didn't expect the Reaper to want to sink his teeth into for want of a better phrase. Well, it's not exactly a minor infraction, is it? No. There's got to be more to it. Don't reason he's taking an interest. Really? What sort of reason, Inspector? You think I can tell what's going on inside the head of that Lord of Darkness? You'll have to ask him yourself, at tomorrow's trial. Are we really going to have to face the Reaper again? The Lord of Darkness, as he puts it? Oh boy. Well... <laughs> I don't think we're going to get any more useful information out of the detective. Can I make a suggestion? Oh, yes, what is it? Well, it seems to me that we must speak with him about this. By him, do you mean Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, exactly. Oh, God, no. Look at, the, look at those shining eyes. You can't wait, can you? Well, Mr. Natsume did blame, mis did blame Mr. Sean for all of this, didn't he? Yes, he did! But he really did! Which makes him an involved party in the case. Are you just going to ignore that? I hope not. You just want to go see him, don't you? Go swoon and over him. I assure you, it's not simply my selfish desire to meet. And you're just confirming it to me. It's not simply my selfish desire to meet with Mr. Sean again. The trouble is... We have no idea of the man's address, even. <laughs> it's Baker Street! How do you know that? It's in his stories, of course. 221B Baker Street, the most famous address in the world. 221B Baker Street. Oh my god! It actually exists! Oh, I see! Well, there's nothing to stop us from going, I suppose. We'd better try to find out our way there before Susato-san gets any more excited and unpredictable. Hooray! I'll summon a carriage! <laughs> so we have to have a reunion already with the great detective, Mr. Hello Jones. What a shame of a guy. Okay, I can investigate. A new location has been added. The police are investigating even in its batting hole. Then a cold dark jail brings home the reality of crime and punishment. And we're really busy, do you think? Oh, pinch me, I'm sure I must be dreaming. Oh, that's because it's here. The home and office of the most detective famous in the world. You ready, everyone? You ready? Oh my god, it's animated. Thank you very much. It's just up there overlooking the street. Good day. Thanks again. This is it. The residence of Mr. Herlock Sholmes. He's spooning like crazy. She really was waiting for this. This looks very nice. Ah. 
I really want to read some of the novels now. Some of these things look like they could be references. Those shoes, that knife in a card, uh, those cards from poker, that statue that looks like it's Napoleon. <coughs> Okay, got it. That hammer. That looks like a bottle of poison, maybe? I like this place. So this is where the great detective makes his living. It feels surreal to be here somehow. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Is it as describing the story as me, Susano? Um, Tatosan? <laughs> oh my god, she's so excited! Many, many famous cases have been solved in this very room. Oh, I suppose they must have been, yes. I never read the story, so it's hard to get quite as excited about it as she seems to be. The detective chases the villain relentlessly as he disappears into the fog gap down on fog down and unlit on London Street. Oh, the thrill of it! The romanticism! Can you feel your heart thumping in your chest? Can you, Mr. Nakuda? Oh, I, I suppose I can, yes. So, if you don't mind... I'll just stand here and soak up the atmosphere for a while longer. Oh my god! Please, don't mind me. What is that over there? Uh, okay, I cannot, look, I cannot focus right now, but she's obsessed! I really am immediately going to watch at that point. Well, looks like your detective friend isn't home at present. Excuse me, is anybody home? Oh, you have a visitor? Oh god, here she is. Is it a big clear case for Mr. Jones? Um, hello? Yes, it's her. He's gonna destroy my throw. Wait, aren't you? Oh, how rude of me. I'll go and make some tea at once. Oh my god. I'm sure it's the same girl. Mr. Sato, did you see the girl who was just here? Oh yes. Isn't it truly extraordinary? I think that the King of Bohemia came to this very room to ask Mr. Shams to take on this case. Whoa, she's completely, completely, <laughs> wow, absorbed by this. The King of Bohemia? King Wilhelm got strange singing small born Herbstein, of course. What the heck? How am I supposed to pronounce that? Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. We'll get the adventures of Mr. Sherlock Shams for a moment and look over there. as well. Got the team. Ah, it's ah, it's you. I knew it. Susato sand record necessary too. Ah, there you are. I'm taking that with you as well. I was looking forward to the trail run of my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Oh, good day to you! I'm, well, inventor, I suppose, of that machine. God! Where is it? <laughs> oh god, I thank god I made some demons for myself. It's the girls who turn out at the end of the Mr. McKilla trial at the defendant's antechamber. I've never met a lawyer from the Far East before. Poor you, having to get straight to war when you're only just arriving in London. Oh, yes, it was. How did she know? Well, try this tea. It's my special blend, you know. Oh, um, thank you. Is this supposed to look that color? <laughs> oh my, what a fragrant jet melon flavor. Hooray! It's a winner. I do blend in different leaves and to all of it fatigue, you see. <laughs> you 
be exhausted after your long watch here. And you have another ticklish trial tomorrow. How do you know that? Oh, and you're here to defend Japanese men. I do wish you lots and lots of luck. Uh, um, did Mr. Shones tell you about us by any chance? Oh, you're not early, do you? Early? Mr. Shones to you? Surely? Mr. Shones was a fellow passenger on the boat that brought us to Great Britain, you see. Was he really? Well, I had no idea. I'm afraid Harley's out on an errand again today. You bet that he's just returned from overseas. Wait a minute. We met this girl from the first try ever yesterday after our trial, and only briefly after that. How on earth does she know so much about us? Yeah, actually, I was saying that. Did she deduce all those things, do you think? And perhaps more to the point. Why is she here in Mr. Sean's suit? Oh, silly me! I haven't introduced myself, have I? It's a great pleasure to meet you both. My name is Iris Wilson. And I am here together with Hurley. <laughs> Okay, so remember how they changed the names of Sherlock, uh, Sherlock Holmes to Sherlock Jones? They also changed the name of John Watson to John Wilson. So, she's actually the Watson of this Sherlock. This Iris Watson. I live here together with Hurley. <laughs> oh, Iris, is it? What a lovely name. What? What's the matter? No, no wait. This is... This can be... Did you... Did you just say that your name is Wilson? What's the matter with Susanna Sand? Why is she so flustered all of a sudden? Yes, that's right! What are your names? Oh, um... I'm Rinosuke Narujo, though. A lawyer from Japan. Oh, sorry! I'm Mr. Narujo, the judicial assistant to Satomi Kotoba. It's wonderful to meet you. Lovely! Susie and Runo! Got it! Runo? Uno? There's more to this girl than meets the eye. I have so many questions for her, I don't know where to be start. Yes, and so do I. What's up, man? This is what I was looking for, to be honest. What is this? Why? Where are all those bullet holes in the wall up there? Was Mr. Sholmes trying to shoot a pestery fly or something? Mr. Sholmes would never do something so reckless. Oh? Those are the letters we are, standing for Victoria Regina. It's Latin for Queen Victoria. Really? Do you mean she shot the queen into the wall? In a moment of boredom, Mr. Sholmes adorned the wall with a patriotic sign, that's all. Pictal practice. That... Those are bullet holes. Those are bullet holes. Why? Right. That makes perfect sense now. Not that it does, to be honest. It's exactly as describing the stories. Oh, this is delightful. I'm not sure that the real explanation is any less reckless than shooting a fly or something. It's patriotic, Mr. Naruhoda. Patriotic. What the heck is that? Also, Victoria Regina? So does that mean that... Hmm. What on earth is huge over-the-top machine? That's the crew analytics analytics scope! It can analyze anything, really, anything at all. That's... that's absolutely incredible! It's one of Harold's inventions! It took him a whole year! He said it was to help him with his investigations! What sort of things he analyzed with it, do you know? Well, actually, he hasn't used it for anything yet. Oh. 
Why not? Apparently, in the evening, he finally completed it. It suddenly occurred to him. I don't actually have anything I need to analyze. <laughs> what the crap? Oh, oh dear. How about you, Una? Do you have anything you'd like to analyze? The only thing that springs to my mind is this machine itself. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, ho, 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 the violin. Oh, I've seen a picture of Western musical instruments like this. It's called a violin, isn't it? Of course it is. Mr. Chum is renowned for his violin playing. It is? Oh, really? Absolutely. It's often explained in the stories. It's inspirational, Mr. Narukodo. Inspirational. I immediately started playing the koto, which was the closest Japanese string instrument I could find. Really? What a shame you couldn't bring it with you to London. Oh, yes, well... Papa was beaming when I asked him if, I could, if he would buy me one. Well, after a while he asked if I would only practice when he was out of the house. So now it's merely an ornament in my room. You play bad, don't you? That must have been an awkward conversation. <laughs> Did I really get an achievement over that? There's all sorts of these shops. Chemistry apparatus, books, papers, and lots of things I've never seen before. It's all here but so high. I can't help feeling that the whole lot is going to topple at any moment. I kept telling Harley not to cram so much on those shelves. Good advice. He went to look up something up on those books a while ago. But it was so deadly wishing he couldn't get it out. So he went about a new cup instead. What? Jones is not exactly the smartest guy, right? I mean, he's good with deductions, but to be smart you actually have to have many skills, and that one doesn't seem logical. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Whoa, what is this? The difference between this side of the room and this side of the room, it's humongous. It looks like that huge metal chest is being used as a table for tea and coffee. It seems very sturdy with an equally sturdy lock. Mr. Narukodo, you mustn't go around opening things. I always have to keep an eye on you, don't I? You're very mischievous. How did you come to that conclusion? Chest. Contains some of my most valuable things. And that smile tells you you're not going to give us any clue about what they are. I do like this fireplace. It is one of the best things I've seen since we arrived in this country, in fact. Lingering beside the fire and watching the flames flicker and dance in the grave. So relaxing. We can't relax, not when there are so many interesting things on the mantelpiece. Yeah, I actually don't know where to stop looking. This is so fun. Oh, it's just as it was described in the stories. It is? Yes, exactly. He said that Persian slipper, for example. I make gentleness for the Levenses. And transfixed by that large dark knife, is my shopping list for the market. Oh god, that sounds incredibly blessed. Cool. Oh, it's not quite how I remember it being described in the pictures of Herlock Scholz. Poor Susanna San, she looks crushed. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. As a matter of fact, I didn't realize that, I, that, the, that all of this was the same place, but it kind of makes sense. The Mr. Shoes, a curious hammer, some Mr. Presenting Man, a bust of Napoleon. What an entrancing collection! This is the first time in my life that I've seen a lonely old shoe displayed as an ornament. Oh, the 
those are all mementos that Holly has connected from his past cases. I'm pretty sure that the case might... that the necklace might be... I don't know, something that he rescued? Really? Even the bust? Yes, that's right! When the mood takes him, he likes to throw it on the floor and smash it to dust. What?! The poor defenseless emperor? Mr. Schwanz destroys it? Yes! And then he buys a new one! What?! You make it sound like he has a player. The, temper the, the temperament of an insane in sculpture, so he actually goes and buys another one? Ah, how interestingly bohemian of him. That is... God, what the heck is wrong with Sholmes? Ah, that's my blackboard where I note down it, yes. Oh, interesting, let's see. Black, Pe Black Peter? What does it mean? Don't you want to hear what Iris has to say, Mr. Narugodo? I'll come back to that blackboard later. Mm. What a beautiful English tea set, and so neatly arranged. It's a favorite pastime of mine. Herbal tea in the afternoon! Tea made of herbs! That's right, I grow all sorts of herbs in the garden, so I can experiment with different plants. One moment to go away! I'll grow a part of a special plant I came up with earlier today. It looks delighted. I only hope it's safe to drink. What is this? That's a charming little white shell. I'm full of charming little bottles too. Oh yes, but don't touch any of those. They might explode. What the? Explode? I thought that there might be poison or something. I didn't think that they would be bombs. Are they exotic chemicals? Do you use them for exciting experiments? Yes, indeed. And as Harley always says, chemistry is an explosive science. Sorry? I agree. A single discovery can trigger an explosion of innovation all around the world. Or perhaps he has meant it literally. Either way, in mental note, do not touch any bottle that belongs to Iris. What is this? Why don't there is a big black lump over there? Ah, that fascinating thing is called a typewriter. It's a machine that allows you to write on paper without needing a pen. And wizardly quickly, too! Oh, that sounds like it would be very useful for someone like me with terrible handwriting. Mm. Wow! Okay, let's see. And that is everything. Let's go back to here. Iris, could I show you this? Exciting. What is it? Tell me all about it! Oh, actually, I was hoping you might be able to tell me something about it. If anything comes to mind. Why would it? Well, no, I suppose it wouldn't. Oh, tell me! I want to hear everything! This hasn't gone according to plan! Okay, this is the same thing. They didn't have a special interaction for the band lawyer. Let's talk with her. It was you that we ran into yesterday, wasn't it? At the Old Bailey? Oh, I guess that's right! You are ever so hopeful, thank you so much! Oh no, not at all. I'm sorry we couldn't have been more welcoming. But at the time, we didn't have a rash letter gun pointed at us. <laughs> How the heck does she get a freaking bazooka? Like this? God! <laughs> ah, thinking back now. You left with Miss Lestrade on tow, in town, didn't you? Oh, yes, that I've worked with Miss Gina Lestrade. Oh, Jeannie? Yes, she's a professional pickpocket. So we found out. It was very naughty of her to pinch my inventions like that. Are you referring to, are you referring to that trial disrupting gun like contraction? Exactly. We followed her, you see, to get it back. Hmm. Perhaps. 
What do you think about feeling a self-destruct mechanism in my best? What the heck is wrong with her? This girl is dangerous. Anyway, I brought Ginny back here after that. She could apologize to my trusted technician. Sorry, your technician? Early, of course, silly. Early? Yes, her luck shows. We leave it here together. I had no idea that Great Detective had such an interesting young daughter. Daughter? Not likely! What? I wouldn't call him Harley if I was my father, would I? Well then, what is your relationship with Mr. Jones? Well, I expect to find out that luncheons of any kind in London are very expensive. So the solution is to share the cost with a partner. A roommate! That is relevant to me right now. Your roommates? I hope you don't mind me asking, Iris. But how old are you? Ten at last this year! Oh my god, that's. Well, what are your mother and father? Oh no, they're not around. Oh, I see. I wonder what the story is there. Yeah, about that. Oh yes, there's something I must ask you. Of course, of course. Go ahead, Susie. I am very great fan of the adventure for Herlock Holmes. Then. Oh, you have a copy of Friends magazine. Yes, I read every issue. It's delivered all the way to Japan on a ship. Oh, this is exciting. My stories are being read on the other side of the world. What? She's the writer. I thought for a second that it was gonna be the other one. My stories? That's right! Early is always solving such amazing cases, you see. And he tells me all about them. They really are quite fascinating. It would be such a shame if I was the only one who ever heard them, don't you think? Goodness! Last night he was telling me all about a new case he just saw on a steamship traveling from a faraway land. So I was just in the middle of typing up the manuscript before the next issue before you came. Do you... you are the author? Yes, I'll let you in on a secret if you like. I'm going to last call this latest adventure The Speckled Band. That's case two! The Speckled Band? That's certainly very familiar. Of course, I always change one or two details in the stories, here and there. This time, I had the idea of making a venomous snake pick the cause of all the trouble. Oh, that was Mr. Schultz. Schultz for your stock as well, actually. Yes! And of course I know that a snake might not be a terrible fit for the facts of the, of the case exactly, but... It's a story. Some poetic license is just the to make it more thrilling, I think. Don't you? So, do you mean to say... Are the stories about Mr. Schultz that are published in Rans magazine? All ready by me? Yes! I'm my wonderful and very modern type reader! But, but all the stories I've ever read are written by a doctor of medicine, Dr. John H. Wilson! Sarasan's getting more and more work up! Ah, uh, yes, that's me! I mean, my name really is Wilson! But, but what about the doctor of medicine part? That's all true, too! I am a doctor of medicine. No, a tinder salt? Okay, I don't even believe that. A tinder salt? Well, that's quite incredible. But, but, Dr. Wilson is an English gentleman. Ah, yes. I did alter the settings slightly for the stories to be more compelling. Oh. Well, it sounds a little strange, doesn't it? Detected with a 10 year old girl in town. I got no objections to that. 
I suppose it does, yes. Oh, she's out of sand. She looks like her whole world has just fallen apart. Um, about before. Yes, yes, what's in your mind, Rina? Then tell me! How did you know that I was a lawyer? And we just arrived in London, I mean. Yes. Oh, and that we have a very difficult trial tomorrow. How did you know all of that? Oh, that's what you mean. Please, tell us how you did it. I have to explain every detail. Of course, I'd be delighted, although there's really no mystery. Now, let's begin. Iris Wilson is proud to present her logic and reason respect. Are you kidding me? Okay. First of all, I knew already that you were a lawyer, Runa. After all, I met you yesterday at the old family in the defense at Santa Chamber. But you also said that we'd only just arrived in London. What did you know then? God, my throat. I observed a passport and travel ticket protruding from your press pocket. Oh. So I was reasonably confident that you must have only had just arrived in the country. And on top of that, you accepted a case against that particular prosecutor, telling me that you were unaware of court of London's court affairs. The Reaper of the Bailey? I walked right into that one, didn't I? Then I noticed a red ink stamp on the back of Susie's hand. You were given that when you visited the local prison to meet with a suspect, weren't you? Earlier today. <gasps> I didn't know that. They used those stamps to keep a close eye on comings and going to see. I didn't realize. And a red stamp is only used for people visiting foreign inmates. So they told me that even though you had only yesterday concluded the trial of Magnus McGilded, the two of you had already had tasks to visit a foreign inmate at a local in prison. However, neither of you was wearing a particular sad expression on your face. So I concluded that prisoner was unlikely to be a friend or a relative. And led me to believe that you must have accepted a new case. Oh my goddess! She's actually on point! She's not sh her look showing this is that this thing. She actually has What the heck is wrong with this girl? I I see. But how, how could you have known that the trial is tomorrow? Well, I've been barely been home for a few hours yesterday. Early solved yet another case. It obviously missed him! He told me that he'd caught a Japanese man who was bowling and traveling! Japanese man? Well, clearly that must have been. Mr. Nuts, Mr. Natsume. Now, Runo has a fancy Japanese sword. And I think you have this called a kimono, isn't it, Tuzi? Well, anyway, it was clear to me that you both came from Japan yourselves. So I put two and two together and decided you must be defending Japanese men, early cut. And there was only one conclusion those facts could lead me to. Who has curly about the cakes? There's a note on the mantelpiece that says the man's trial will be tomorrow. Well, he's always stabbing his nuts with a knife, you know. He's silly. Yes, he is. You're not. You're scary as heck. And that's all there was to it, really. Thank you for listening. I'm Iris Wilson, and that was one of my great detections. What the heck is wrong with this? She is a genius, not Chomps! Well, was it a winner? Were my deductions correct? They... they were spot on! That was amazing, Aris. Really a great deduction. You had managed to ascertain something of Mr. Chomps' delivery. Oh well, I was just copying her style for that. This is really very good news. You could tell 
us all about the case involving the Japanese man. You will, won't you, Iris? Please? So yesterday, Mr. Shoes apprehended a Japanese man, you were saying? Yes! Early had just arrived back in London after his seat in Potash. But the police were waiting for him at the railway station to take him directly to the crime scene. Ah, oh, the great detective is a popular man, it seems. Apparently, a woman was stabbed in a quiet street somewhere in town. There were witnesses who had seen a short, shifty looking stoop man running away from the scene. A short, shifty looking stoop man? Mr. Natsume, be you it out? Suzuki-san said that he didn't see anybody else on the street at all, but it seems there were witnesses after all. Harley used his great detective powers to determine the man's address. It was a luncheon room very nearby. He went directly there with the police, and what did he find? A short, shifted looking stoop man shivering with fear. Uh, Mr. Shum's great deduction certainly hit the mark that time. Of course it did. He's a great detective. Still, that means the incident occurred only two days ago. Surely tomorrow is too soon for the trial, isn't it? Definitely. I'm not time to investigate properly. Early says that runs London is rife with crime. Oh. The Punjab is doing its best, but they can stay on top of it, apparently. Oh dear. I didn't realize that the situation was so tired. That's why they can't afford to spend too much time investigating cases and trying the criminals in court. Life and money are both short. Crimes are usually panic pinned in the first suspicion person. That's terrible! I suppose it's the harsh reality of the workings of the world's greatest justice system. I suppose it is. But in that case, I don't hold out much hope for Suzuki san. Thank you for answering so many of our questions, Iris. This has been very informative. Oh, you're most welcome! I've had so much fun! You happen to know where Mr. Shoms is at the moment? As you guess, we'd like to ask him some questions about this case as well. Ah, oh, well! I expect your is still investigating the scene! Of the case involving Mr. Natsume, you mean? Yes, Mr. Natsume! Um, Hurley said he was going to the man's lodging. If you leave now, you'll probably catch him there! Da, 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 da. Iris, do you know where those lodgings are? Well, I imagine the police are still investigating the scene of the crime themselves, aren't they? You happen to come across a detective by the name of Gregson when you were there? Yes, we know Inspector Gregson. Goody, in that case. Yep, Greg, see this from me, would you? If you do that, I'm sure he'll tell you what you want to know. What is this? A function in peace and a postcard, it seems. Iris Postcard has been entered. Okay, I have for the message back from Iris. It reads Tell the gentle one, gentleman to in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that won't be a problem. This will make this painter help us, will it? This is a vibe in peace, isn't it? I believe it's called a crown. Yes, and you can train a Scotland Yard detective to do whatever you want with just a single one. Iris must be the most powerful 10 year old in the world. How much is five shillings, by the way? What's it really worth? Hmm, well, it's probably enough to buy all the chips the inspector could possibly eat in a whole month. That's crazy. Ah, <laughs> it's actually written here in English. I like it. Irish little handwriting is adorable, isn't it? Tell this gentleman in black wherever he wants to know. I trust that won't be a problem. Yes, the handwriting might be adorable, but the message is ominous. There's no room for sentiment there. I'm sure it's simply the way you're interpreting it, Mr. Naruhodo. Anyway, I don't hope the inspection will tell us what we need to know when he reads it. You don't think it will just make him much paper hot chips until steam comes out of his ear, do you? Well, that would be an entirely terrible outcome.
Well, thank you, Iris. We'll give it a try. Good luck, then. I am going to return to writing my manuscript. The speckled egg. I hope we make it more special than of tea. I'll come back soon. We'd be delighted. Thank you so much, Iris. Well, Mr. Lerohodo, it's back to the scene of the crime. Oh, thank God I don't have to make her voice anymore. Though so, some thought obvious that they would assert any influence over the men of Scotland Yard at all. We headed back to the scene with a very curious note and one of the world's heaviest silver coins in hand. La 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 I think my throat can make it. Let's keep going. Dear Lord, she's just curious, hey. It looks as though the police are still here, carrying on with their investigation. Perfect, so let's find Inspector Gregson as quickly as possible. Yes, and let's see if he'll take a break from his chips to look at that silver tip Iris gave us from him. That's very funny. Whenever he disappears, whenever he appears, everyone ever does appear. It's Trans Street. Okay, we're in the same spot. Um, Inspector Gregson, do you have a moment? I'm sorry to say I don't. I'm a very busy man. Much too, too busy to talk with a very foreign cigarabouts, that's for sure. We have this for you. A present from Miss Iris Wilson. What? For me? From her ladyship? Ladyship? Give that here at once! Come on, hand it over, that's for me! Uh, don't wait for me to give it to you. Don't wait for me to give it to you, will you? Um, what was that coin exactly? Silver crown, obviously, but it's a lot more than that. It's, well, an appearance fee, that's what it is. An appearance fee? Oh, I see what you mean. That's right, with the adventures of Sherlock Jones. Your leadership always offers me a little financial reward for featuring me every time. Yes, yes, of course. I know all about your explain, Inspector. I read them aptly. Of course, they're using my name without my say, so it does make me part of a lot, lot of unpleasant jokes, but still. <coughs> Maybe I'm not as ready. I am sorry, Inspector, that must be difficult for you. Never you mind that. So, what do you want to know, eh? Sorry? Tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that won't be a problem, it says. Well, obviously, it's not a problem. Go on, far away. What do you want to know? Well, you wouldn't mind, Inspector. We'd very much like to know the address of Mr. Natsume's lodgings. Ah, the little knife wielding mustache Japanese fellow? He lives in a right hole hovel. It's just over there, look. Really? Wait, 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 wait. Was it really such a big deduction from Sholmes that he was next to where the stabbing occurred? First floor of that house in the corner where that wreck of a bike is bicycles propped up. That is nearby indeed. I remember rightly, the landlord is Mr. John Gary Depp. Right, Will. If you see her again, you make sure you give her ladyship married hearts to hear. I mean it. Tell her that Greg sends his very best wishes. Don't worry, Inspector, we will. Goodbye for now, then. Dogling her ladyship. Whoa, that girl has a lot of power. Well, at least he told us what we wanted to know before he left. 
Yeah, so then shall we go and see what we can find in Mr. Natsume's lodgings? Definitely! Is this new? That's a rather typical old brick building, isn't it? I'm sure it has a long and interesting history. Well, times are telling us that blah 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 blah, saying all over. In fact, it looks in the satellite worse shape than the other houses around here. According to Inspector Craigson, that's a house where Mr. Natsume has lodging. Just across the road from where the incident took place, I see. It must be awful for Soseki san, getting caught up in something like this in a foreign land. Oh. Oh, she is there! Ah, that's my black we're wearing, not down ideas! Black Perrier? What does it mean? Oh, how intriguing! It must be the title of Iris' latest work! Oh my! I wonder what fantastic tales awaits us! That other sound looks like an angel, but I bet she's dreaming of the most clips of camera you can imagine. It's a case that her herself just recently. A black cat Peter went missing in the neighborhood. Track it down to a, at a fishmonger in the end. Well, I can't wait for this story to be published. <laughs> she wanted something darker. Also, wanna see? I said her work her desk. Look, stepping away on her typewriter so fast her fingers are blurred. Sorry, I can't stop. I have to meet the deadline for the next issue. Oh, I see. You must be very busy today. Don't disturb her, Mister Naruhodo. She's ready for a <laughs> takedown. I won't, so you can lower your arms now, please! Ah, uh, I've seen picture of Western music on the kind of violin, isn't it? Of course it is, blah blah blah. Oh, really? That's right, I sort of silk that in. What? You did what? Iris? Wait, what? Western music. Of course it is, Mr. Shumps is renowned for his violent playing, or really, that's right, I just don't play that in. Did what? I didn't really give it a lot of thought and just started adding it into the stories. Yes, Mr. Shumps' exceptional violent playing has been mentioned a number of times. But the truth is, Hurley had barely touched a violin in his life upon uh, after the point. God, thank God I came back! <laughs> thank God I came back! I imagine that a lot of things have changed. Of course, people started asking him to play for them after my stories were published. Ah, he wasn't able to tell them that he didn't know how. What did he do? He went straight to the pawn shop and bought himself a very nice violin. And then he practiced. He practiced until his fingers very nearly dropped off. Must be why he's so highly strong. Before I knew it, he'd become rather good. The greatness of the great detective really showed that it's pretty epic. Oh my god, did that really work? It was a great deception, that's for sure! Oh my god! It was backwards! Why was that backwards? Oh my god! Oh my god! Thank god I came back! There's a reason I came back, I come back to these places to be honest. It seems that we can meet with Mr. Natsume at the moment. Oh, he's being brief about his appearance in court tomorrow, apparently. I see. Yes, the trial is only a day away. All right then, let's come back later. Yes! I really hope he's not answering any more questions with inappropriate text but guys are like, Yes, I do! Okay, nothing here. God, I'm starting to fear for me. Wait, he has a cannon? Why? Why does he have a cannon? Oh my god. May I help you? Ah, 
Uh, yes, this was the resident of Mr. John Garrider. Indeed it would, sir. And who may I say is calling? My name is Renosuke Narujodo. I am... Um... Mr. Narujodo is representing Mr. Suseki Natsume. I believe he takes lodgings here. Ah! We would very much like to ask him some questions about our client. What is wrong with this maid? One moment, please. I shall convey the message to Mr. Karidev. Did you see that, Mr. Sus Ms. Susato? That was a real-life English maid. I know. As I understand it, anyone else of anyone of standing in English society employs a number of. <laughs> you know that I like this game, and actually, having been slow because I've been playing. For everybody to see. I'm in case four, as you say, but I actually took some days off just because I hadn't had the time to set this up. Every single time that I played, I've been doing it on stream. And when I finished case one, and I was finishing case three, I replayed case one just in case the context is needed. I don't know if it's gonna be important. You don't say it. Don't say it. But I wanted to keep context to everybody. Which reminds me that I need to start publishing on YouTube. I guess I'll eventually post this on YouTube as well. But for now, let's keep going. Oh, share a like if you enjoy this, by the way. It will be very fun to see your like appear. I know. As I understand it, anyone of standing in English society employ a number of household staff. But that was the first time I've ever seen one in the flesh! Oh, this day keeps getting better! It certainly feels like we've arrived now, doesn't it? Oh, there it is! The like! <laughs> we need only to meet a butler, and the experience will be complete. Well, I'm not sure if I'd go that far, but I understand the sentiment. Thank you for waiting! Mr. Gardeb will see you now! This way, please! What the heck? That looks like a metal banner, and it's showcased in a very grand banner. Yes, it's displayed with some pride, I would say, although it bothers me that it's not straight. What that old thing? Sorry? I should be glad to see the back of it, but the general would turn in his grave if I dispose of it. There was the place, place for kid. Gives the bully thing out of my way. So it's just been polished to shine by accident, I suppose? There appears to be an inscription on the medal itself. Look! Let me see. It says, for distinguished participation. Sounds like the guy of honors even I could be in line for. Well, does, one doesn't like to blow one, one's own trumpet, but I was given that for my time in the army. And measure an officer by the number of medals of his name, of course. Some more knowledge in military circles. Aren't they important, though? But what are you, as a rich person? That portrait of Mr. Gary that is glaring at me, I swear! Have you noticed all, that all the little frames contain photographic prints of Mr. Garidev as well? Yes, and there seems to be a statue and a lion on the mantelpiece as well. Ah, yes, seem to come back from the local pawnbroker with a little trinket. Seem to come back? What do you mean? Did that chap who runs the place is a valley wizard? Went in to sell him something and came out with a thing. The point in fact, now I think about it, I rather often find myself leaving a place with something I don't need. The lion ornament certainly does seem surplus to requirements. Zato san doesn't pull her punches, or her throws for that matter. <laughs> Are those mortar shells? They're enormous, so he's a cannon. Oh, I hadn't noticed. What are they doing here? Ah, oh, those old things. A couple of little rounds I accidentally fired into the barracks of during training, but you know. Became a bit of color for regiment folklore, that incident. You mean you deliberately hunted out the 
Ant shells? Well, I wouldn't say I delivered it exactly. I'm surprised that I still don't have same profile. They're only scrap iron after all. Usually just thrown away, I believe. But you never know when things might come in useful, do you? Useful for what exactly? Hmm, yes, well. Hmm. John here did manage to knock one of their valley things in my food the other day while she was dusting. Oh no! I haven't shed a tear since 1869 before then, you know. Maybe we consider throwing them away? I wonder if her name actually got updated. Nope. That uniform looks fairly ancient, doesn't it? It's clearly being well looked after that, though. That old thing? Ha! Not much better than ducks, really. Than rats, really. Oh? Wore that ceremonial garb of my retirement passion. But I'm not one for dwelling on the past, me. We'll have gladly thrown it out, but you know how it is. Anyway, it doesn't hurt to have the old piece of a memorabilia lying around, does it? No, he's actually proud and making us as if not a deal. Oh, I see. Perhaps we should leave the past in the past. That's a full size cannon! What's it doing in here? Oh my! It's real! I thought it might be a replica! Why does you have a cannon? That old thing! That's not a little more than a toy. Sorry? The army was selling it off when I retired, so I decided to give it a new home. Never know when the enemy might attack next. Surely useful to have a cannon about the house. Why do you have a cannon in the house? What do you think is gonna happen? Really? Is it overkill? We prepare, I always say. You never know what this twisted world is going to throw at you next for. Do you think there may be trouble brewing, Mr. Garden? Always is. Take Joan here. Never fails to have a cleanup running reserve. Drives them all over their barrel, you see. They draw very well on the cannon there, Joan tells me. Which rather proves my point, I feel. It's been reduced to a giant rack. No wonder the huge cannon looks like it's handed at say head in shape. Stream. It must have been put there deliberately, surely. What is that? I'll check it later. Yes, certainly it seems like someone's trying to hide something from Bill. What could be behind that, I wonder? I'm going to have a very quick look. Just a little peek. <coughs> Maybe let, let, let's not, Mrs. Sato. I think the maid is going to head us off with a cup of tea. I think they... Sorry, sorry. I think the maid is going to head us off with a cup of tea. <laughs> this, what, what is this? I cannot check this. Oh, look! What a wonderful collection of cakes lined up and that gleaming silver cake thing, really? I cannot see them from here. I know! It looks more like someone has half demolished them to me. Afternoon. Afternoon tea is a time of indulgence, you know. It is quite the English way. It is my wrist. It's Mr. Carradine's custom to take the cake with his tea. That sounds delightful. Oh, wait a minute, though. There are at least 10 cakes on this cake stand. Well, naturally, and it will never do the waste to do. And it will never do to waste the leftovers. So whatever Mr. Garethev doesn't eat, I say to myself, John, you shall have to tidy up! Oh my god! Oh my god, that's why they made it that design! How magnanimous of you! Okay, just because I wanted to... There <laughs> actually very, very many of them. I notice you have a pile of books here, Mr. Gary Depp. Do you enjoy, enjoy reading? Every experience along the winter, boy. The nights are long. No better way to pass the time than in front of the fire with a jolly good, good book. Oh. What? Yeah. 
Oh, there's a copy of Mr. Trans Magazine here, I see. No doubt Mr. Garrison enjoys, Carrie Depp enjoys the adventure of Herlock Holmes too. The Great Detective has a great many followers, it would seem. Okay. The window. This window looks over. This window looks out over Brian Road, where the young woman was attacked. Oh yes, I can make out the police on the far side of the road investigating the crime scene. Well, this is rather murky, isn't it? You can see very clearly. Does this thing open at all? I wonder. I shouldn't have underestimated the bitterness of a London winter, sir. Sorry? As soon as you open that window, the two will freeze in the pot! No Londoner would go opening windows at dusk in the middle of winter, I assure you! It seems very unlikely that these two would have seen anything on the incident then. Oh, because the windows would have frozen over, I get it. This still candle hunter looks like a little out of place here, wouldn't you say? Yes, you're right. It's clearly supposed to be cold, but it's almost completely black for some reason. Oh, um, that old thing, yes. Just a piece of cheap piece of iron mongery. Game grunt, really. Oh? You said when I was studying, don't you know? For my commission. I know it's old, hardly worth anything on to hanging on to, really. But well, it still has its uses sometimes. Of course. Everything in this room has some elaborate story behind it. They're memories, Mr. Narukado. Memories. What are those, anyway? Look at this crockery on display here. It's rather unusual, isn't it? Oh my, a gin in London dresser. Isn't it delightful? Although the shelves seem to be broken and the crockery is... Oh dear. It seems big. Oh my god! I hadn't realized what it was. Oh, everything on the right... Everything on, on this side... It's a... Uh... It's destroyed! It's a bunch of plates and jelly and everything and it's broken as heck! It really, it really is! The war crack wouldn't do that China with justice! Ah, I wonder! Perhaps the cannon was fired in! <laughs> what? Yes, yeah, probably something like that, but let's not tell to it. Good day to you. You got it about your service. Pleased to meet you, sir. This is Renoski Narukada. He's a defense lawyer. Do oh, excuse me not getting off. Take a shot, took a shot to the knee a few years back in the Battle of Maywan, don't you know? Earned a medal for my pains but had to withdraw from service. Handed over the reins to, uh, to the up and comings. So he's a retired soldier. It's a hell of a job getting up and down the stairs now, I can tell you. Don't get out too much as you can imagine. Oh, I hadn't realized that that thing on the right is actually a uh, crotch. Yes, it's gotta climb up here to the second floor, isn't it? I was pointing out the top of the stairs. You really must take more exercise, eh, eh, Mr. Narukada. Do you think so? Well, Mr. Gary, that I thought you were very courageous to earn yourself a medal. Oh, it was nothing. The medal's just a folder, or really. I wouldn't like to offend the general, though. So I grudgingly, grudgingly displayed it on the wall. Why don't you fetch it down, John? Let these good people see it properly. John, fetch it! Ah! <laughs> Dust it, woman! Be careful! What the heck was that? Oh my god, what, what did I just say? <laughs> oh dear me, I do beg your pardon, sir! You jolly nearly took the skin off my hands! I shall be more careful, sir! So anyway, there you have it. Living the quiet life now. Yes, I, I see. <laughs> that was very cool. <laughs> now that I hear you want to know about the job lodging downstairs, is that right? Yes! 
We will be very grateful that you could answer some questions for us. Only to please, naturally, especially if it helps to keep the police here in Dwighty. There it is. Let's keep going. The Fortune Alliance with the Empire of Japan recently, as I'm sure you're aware. Oh boy. But this case is very much in the public eye, as it were. Oh, is it? Even had some famous detective poking around, you know, in this whole house, would you believe? Yes, Mr. Herlock Jones. Both have been, they didn't catch you to our shop's names, not really make a of the old that detective business. Oh, but you have a copy of Friends Magazine here, so... Mm-hmm, uh, uh, no, 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 uh, uh, uh. Anyway, the shop's investigating the foreigners' rooms as we speak. Though he's in the second son's room. It's a bully nuisance, it's what it is. The whole neighborhood squad switching its curtains now. I don't like all this fuss, it's jolly unsettling. You know, even though he's a landlord and everything, wasn't this building completely destroyed from the outside? And also now that I see it from the inside as well, it's starting to fall apart? I don't like all this fuss, it's jolly unsettling. About Mr. Natsume then, Mr. Gary Depp, please do tell us. Ah uh, yes, Japanese chap, only been lodging here for a, for a quick. Oh, just one week? Oh, he moved in very recently then. I have two lodgers most of the time, one on the ground floor and one just below us. The first floor became an abebo a week ago. You see, there being oh, <laughs> that's it all, John. Do be careful. Oh my goodness, I'm terribly sorry, sir. It's crazy. If you want to know my opinion, I thought he was a shitty sort from the moment I said I saw him. You don't seem like a good person, John. Oh? Why? You seem to have a most nervous disposition, always shaking and looking over his shoulder. The man has shady written all across, all over across his sweet, so wrong if you ask me. I said to myself, John! That man is trouble. Sooner or later he's going to do something on tower. And I'm really wrong about anything. We won't be calling this made as a witness, that's for sure. Was there something else that struck your suspicion about the man at all? <gasps> yes! Oh yes, indeed it was! And she's dying to tell us. Did you notice anything at all about your lodger, Mr. Natsume? Oh my poor yes! The man was shorter than an orca! Did you elaborate? Well, take the man's room. Absolutely stuff full of book cities. More than anyone could ever read. Why, he never such as much as passes the time of day with another little soul. I haven't seen a single visitor call. He just trots off to that old bookshop every day and comes back at five to light in the gas fire. And the funny little man is up long past the time. Everyone else is in the house has gone to bed too. Oh. Uh, I see. Gentleman on the crown floor goes to bed at around 9 each night. But I've never known the Japanese fellow to retire any earlier than 2 in the morning. Oh. Could you kind of clarify something, I wonder? What, pray? How do you know so much about Mr. Natsume's routine? <gasps> I understand that neither of the lodgers live on this floor above the house. Is that correct? That's right! Yes, they're both below us! On the first floor and street level! Then, how is it that you know so much about the lives of your lodgers? The precise times that they come back in the evening, for example, even the times they go to bed. <laughs> Good grief, John! Be more careful, woman! Oh my goodness, sir! I'm terribly sorry, sir! Hmm... Something doesn't add up here.
She's a racist! She's racist! Yeah, she's a racist! Let's say it with me, she's racist. It seems that the incident took place at around 5 in the evening. You happen to look out the window at around that time? Huh? The window? Yes. We noticed that the window over there looks out over the Ryan Road. The incident took place on the pavement, on the pavement just on the far side of the street. Was there anyone suspicious loitering nearby? 5 o'clock is dinner time in the Gary Depp household. So I'm afraid I don't remember seeing anything. How about you, Joan? No, sir. I don't seem to be. It will have been dusk outside already at an hour. And with the fog as well, I should think it would have been quite impossible to see the other side of the road. Oh, I see. Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary then? Not just. Anything at all. Even if it seems unrelated. Hmm. Well... Yes? Was there something else up? Well, it's nothing particularly significant, but around that sort of timing here, there are... <laughs> For the love of God, Joan, watch what you're doing! Oh, dear me, what have I done? I'm awfully sorry, sir. She is the worst. I hate her already. Do be more careful, woman. Of course, sir. If I may, Mr. Narrow Hollow. Narrow Hollow. Oh, my God. I have an excellently good memory. As far as I can remember, nothing of any significance took place here at that hour. Nothing at all. Oh, really? Mr. Garrett? The way you're talking before, it sounded rather like there where we have been. Oh, well, as I was saying, it was just a trifle matter, really, nothing of it. Dear Lord, I'm trying to shout in that hair. John, that's it all. What is the matter with you, woman? Begin your pardon, sir. Nothing happened. Hmm, yes. What? Nothing happened. We sat down to a quiet and eventful meal. Hmm. John? That's right, Mr. Karusev. What is the matter with these two? It sounds like something happened here in this room on the evening of the incident. But what? Wish I knew. Could you tell us which floor is Mr. Natsume's room? Yes? Why, certainly. Just below us on the first floor. And Mr. Shum's investigating the Raven as we speak? Yes. Told me he's not, not his name had asked him to look into the matter. So I gave him the key. Mr. Natsume had his case, hasn't she engaged? Mr. Natsume has engaged Mr. Shum's services? That's a bleeding lie! Would it be alright if we also had a look around? In Mr. Natsume's room, I mean. Hmm. Don't see why not. You just don't want flight of stairs. Who knows if we'll find anything that could help us with the case, but we have to try. We need all the clues we can we need all the clues we can lay our hands on, shall we? Yes, and while we're there, we can speak with Mr. Schultz again! Perhaps he'll be able to tell us more. I hate this woman. What is that? Is that a burn mark? Yeah, that's a burn mark. Something happened here. Something got burned. Holy sh Wasn't this one of the rooms that from outside looked like the windows should have been those? Is that a cat? Just look at this place. Yes, well, there's a most thing here. The most is a mountain of old books that are responsible for that. I don't think I've ever seen so many books in all of my life. No, me neither. It's so dark in here too.
Is that the window over there? Well, it was the window, I think, Jess. Once upon a time. But for some reason, it's been closed up with bricks and mortar. So this is where Minister Natsume lives. By the way... I haven't spotted Mr. Schultz anywhere, have you? No, that's true, but according to what Mr. Garrett told us, the great detective should be around here somewhere investigating. He's gonna pop up, isn't he? Let's start with the window. Did you even call this a window? I think so. It was a window at one time, after all. Although all that remains is a frame around some bricks now. So really, it's just a wall then now, is it? But why would anyone deliberately break up, break it up like that? I'm afraid I have no idea. <gasps> Perhaps Mr. Natsume painted the brick design on in a flint bit of a flint whimsy. Uh, that's alarmingly feasible. Anyway, whatever the reason, the lack of ventilation in here makes the place very impressive. It does. I imagine being cooped up in a room like this would be extremely trying. I know, there are some people that actually like this kind of setting. Oh, look, it's a bickering cat from home. It's a bit big and bulky, isn't it? Surely Mr. Natsume didn't bring the Maneki Neko all the way from Japan with him. I hardly think you're in a position to comment, Mr. Narukoda. Are you forgetting the nervous Daruma doll that you brought in your luggage? What? Well, it can be dangerous traveling abroad. I want a luck charm. Well, I imagine Mr. Natsume wanted the same, and this cat is sure to become good luck to him. He's not doing a very good job so far, is it? You mustn't say such a thing, such thing. I didn't say a word. Why are my eyes such a giveaway? This appears to be some sort of meter on the wall here. It looks very robust. I wonder what's it for. There's a slot for inserting coins here too. What? I believe that is a gas meter, not Mr. Naruhodo. Gas meter? Yes, it seems that there's a pipe gas in this dish switch, which consumers pay for by putting coins in the meter. So if we were to put a coin in the slot... That would be enough gas to use the lights and the gas fire for the whole night. So if you're too poor to have a coin, you'd have to spend the night in the dark and freezing cold. That's right, but a rich man would only carry crisp white nuts. Hmm... London is a scary place. Look at all those books packed up, stuck up there. They almost reached the ceiling. They're all words of English literature, and they all smell so musty. With this volume of books to hand, you'd never be short of reading material, would you? No. What a dreamy idea. A bad dream, maybe. For me, at least. And you, I don't imagine the book that's at the bottom of the pile now will ever be read again. Ah, so reading is an experience that comes but once in a lifetime. Just as the tea ceremony teaches us. They certainly didn't expect the conversation to turn down the path of tea ceremony philosophy. Look at all these balls of papers on the floor. Her notes are scrawled over them in English. It looks like the waste paper basket is so full they've just fallen out. I think. Mr. Natsume must have been deeply immersed in his research, don't you? Or deeply averse to tidying up his mess. Mm. I wouldn't like to speculate which is closer to the truth. Yeah, that would be very bad and mean and spirited. That test seems to be wedged into a crevasse between the mountains of books on either side. I suppose Mr. Natsume would sit there and read while stroking his cat. But surrounded on all sides by this tower and old tomes, surely he dreamt of, every, of books every night as well. Yes, he must have done, mustn't he? <gasps> What's this? It's a receipt from a second-hand bookshop. Your books. Oh, yes, Mr. Natsume's name is on it. Look, the date of the purchase. Do they say go at 4.45pm? That's the end of the incident. 
That's just a short while before he was embroiled in the terrible attack. He must have been on his way back from buying some old books. Did this cover on Mr. Blah 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 blah? Oh, okay, that makes sense. Oh god, you're adorable. Oh my, what an adorable little cat! Perhaps he's looking after all the books while his master is away. I don't know about that, he disappeared into that pile of books as quick as a flash. It was a tricolor my Mickey, wasn't it? Do they have that sort of cat here in Great Britain? Perhaps Mr. Natsume brought that little creature with him from Japan. That's made me feel homesick now. Already? We love it! We've only been here in the country for two days. Oh, the little kid is gone. Oh well. Books, 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 books. Words, 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 words. Oh, there you are. Thank you. I knew that, I would that you would eventually pop up, I just... Where were you hiding, Sean? Ah, look, Mr. Narukodo! <laughs> there he is! Where did he appear from? He seems to be engrossing the page of, of an old book. I hope he won't mind if we disturb him. Hello, Mr. Shows! Oh, you too! Good day! Oh, you too! Good day! Now, let me see. Where was it that we met? Oh, Mr. Show, we were together in the SS Buria! Yes, of course, the Buria. And let me see. What happened on that voyage? It was Kazuma Asugi. He. Yeah. Uh, tragically, but you were a great help to us. Oh, yes, but of course, the case of Mr. Asuki. It was the one with the snake, wasn't it? Oh, well, you seem to remember something out of it at last. What an honor to be remembered vaguely by the great Herlock Sholmes. Vaguely! <laughs> this is Mr. Oh, no, 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 my dear madame, hold your tongue. I pride myself on my superior powers of recollection. Your names are still recorded in my brain attic. Five, four, three, two, one. Miss Narujudo. And Mr. Susato. <laughs> Try the other way around, Mr. Sholmes. <laughs> I lose the first round. In truth, I had hoped to invite you both to my Baker Street suit the day we arrived in London. But some Scotland charters ambushed me at a railway station and whisked me away to a crime scene. And I, it was an entirely trivial case, of course. I sold the matter in no more than 30 minutes. So they apprehended Sosekis and in that short an amount of time. Free the pursuance of a new case had told my recollection of my past events and past involvements a little. Little? It is a mistake to think that one's brain attic has elastic walls and can extend to any extent. I do my best to forget useless facts, as they should elbow out the useful ones. Yes, those are my own words of inimitable wisdom, you know, from an adventure entitled A Study in Scarlet. Please, there's no need to quote yourself. Oh, I don't know, I don't know which to remember my proofs of wisdom, but unfortunately, I associate pens and beautiful. He means Cyrus, I suppose. Mr. Jones, we have some extremely important questions to ask you about the trivial case you just mentioned. Goodness, what an earnest question. My dear madame, I should, don't, I should only be pleased. And this murky room is an apt place to discuss or the case. I wonder if I can check what he was feeling. Nope. Mr. Narujudo, please! Despite his aspersion to the contrary, I am a professional. If I am to unleash my deductive powers on that trinket, I must ask for a sum of three pounds in cash. Oh, I don't need you to make any deductions about it. I'm just wondering if you might know. Mr. Narujudo, as a professional, I insist that I find it to offer my opinion on the trinket. 
I must ask for a sum of three pounds in cash. I believe Mr. Shelves has designs on an expensive copy of the complete works of Shakespeare. Yes, do stand on the stage and meet Rapper as a plus. It has long been a dream of mine, as you know. I literally have no idea. Okay, it's the same dialogue. What about the receipt? There it is. Oh, the receipt for the bookstore Stoops Japanese friend purchase. I uncovered that yesterday morning. Am I brother's phone with you agree? Oh, yes, the work of a truly great detective. What a scattered brain individual he must be to have left it behind. Curiously, there was no mention of this publication on the receipt. Only when you consider how fascinating it is. You mean not everyone in London buys France magazine every time you visit a shop? Yes, or indeed. Oh, Mr. Shaw, how respectfully you slip that into the conversation. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you agree. Detective stories can be great works of literature too, my dear fellow. We know this to be the lodgings of a Japanese foreign student by the name of Susaki Natsume. Seems that you assisted in his arrest, Mr. Schwartz. Or the stabbing of a young woman aside here in Bry Road? Hmm, Natsume, Natsume. Yes, I believe it was rather along those lines. <laughs> but Mr. Natsume denies it. Was it really justifiable to arrest him and so little? I'm sorry, Mr. Sato. But I have not the slightest idea what you mean. What? I can't believe he was looking so saddle and squirrely in the eye while fighting ignorance. He did exactly the same thing on case 2. What the heck is wrong with this guy? I assure you, I am not merely fighting ignorance. It would appear as if the pair of you are under some misapprehension. Huh? How? I assure you, I have no recollection of accusing your stupid compatriot of the crime. But that doesn't make sense! The good detective of Scotland Yard made the following request of me, and I quote verbatim. I need you to ascertain the identity of one of us of a man who seemed fleeing the crime scene. <laughs> yeah, a man seemed fleeing. There were a number of books scattered on the pavement on the scene. From the book plates, I was quickly able to determine the bookshop from which they had been purchased. Once speaking with the proprietor, I was immediately led to this address. Elementary, wouldn't you say? Actually, that makes sense. I believe that there is a receiver around here somewhere from the establishment in question. Do you think, don't think Mr. Natsumi is a culprit then? Hmm, that I could not tell you. But it was aggravating my faculties, hence why I returned here. However, this place is such a trove of fascinating books. I found myself quite lost in people. Be Bibliophily! Do not be deceiving to believing that I am a man of leisure. No, 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 no. Oh dear. Let's see what he has to say about the landlord. Ah, oh, tell me. Have you encountered the landlord of these lodgings? Yes, Mr. Garrider, a retired military man. It was the first time I've ever met a soldier from the Great British Institution that is the services. And it was the first time I've ever met a maid from the Great British Institution that is, well, service. <laughs> She's a beetle. Oh! <laughs> I didn't think it was that funny. I do apologize. As you may well be aware, many households in London employ a maid. Yes, read as much as in my Great Britain Premier. And so, conversely, whether or not a household employs a maid has come to be talking the social standing of those dwelling to read. Be talking their social standing, sorry? I actually don't, didn't get what he said. But it's simply, my dear fellow, those who include at least a single maid are considered middle class. Those who do not are beneath. Wait, what? So basically, having a maid is actually in... Oh? In the upper excellence of society, of course household employed enough staff to constitute a large family. Goodness! How extraordinary! As you can appreciate, 
Produced on the precarious boundary between the middle and lower classes, being able to afford just one maid is of the first importance. Why? Social standing? I, I have no idea. And it's for the precisely that reason that I find my great stimulation in the situation upstairs. Specifically, in the retired army veteran, Mr. John Gardet. Huh? Affable as he is, the fellow is hiding something. Yeah, I could tell immediately. And the maid as well. Whether or not it imposes on the circumstances of this case, I am as yet unable to ascertain. I'm truly lost on what he means to say. This room is truly suffocating for the soul, my dear fellow. I assure you, any man whose lot is to dwell in a place such as this will stop somebody sooner or later. Mr. Natsume has to stop no one! Ah, but sooner or later, as I say. I don't believe that's the issue here. About this dark little room, Mr. Schwanz. Why is there no longer a window? You don't have an idea? No window? Well, I mean, I can clearly see that there is a window of sorts. But it's been completely broke by, grip, by bricks. Oh, I see. The answer to this question is quite simple. Window tax. Window tax? What is that? Surely, not a tax on windows. Precisely that. Oh my goodness! Until relatively recently, the tax was levied on households in this country by the number of their windows. Those of lesser means, having inherited a sizable and costly family home perhaps, rapidly closed windows up. While the rich open windows here, there and everywhere. So having windows is a question of status now? In an effort to curry favor with those in power by furnishing them with large sums of money. How awful! And unjust! For some people to live in rooms devoid of fights! Indeed, this is what's rife as a result. So some 40 years ago or thereabouts, the window tax was abolished. But its legacy remains as you can see, in squalid lodgings such as this for example. I suppose Mr. Natsume's stipend for living here in London isn't very generous perhaps. It would appear so, have done little digging. And discovered that these lodgings were offered at an extraordinarily low price. Because the room is so awful I should think. Apparently Mr. Natsume only moved in here about one week ago. Yes, that's correct. However, I don't believe the low rent is explained by the shabby nature of the accommodation. Oh? Bill, that is of little relevance here. Am I not worthy of further attention? Are you sure? I'm curious now. Actually, I'm curious as well. That woman up there already knows this guy's um, routine. A week after she, he came here? Wait, I believe I've told you all I can now. Thank you, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, oh, jeez, Mr. Naruhudo. Was it not your intention to become a practitioner of law? You remember that, didn't you? Will you perhaps be offering your services in this very matter, I wonder? To the occupant of this room, Mr. Natsume, was it? I'm not sure. Not sure? On what grounds? Well, I actually defended someone in court here only yesterday. Really? Well, then I congratulate you, sir, on an ambition realized, and so promptly, too. The thing is, it's really made me question things. Am I right to blame in my clients? To trust in their innocence? Hmm, yes, trust. Mr. Scholz? Mr. Natsume didn't do it, did he? <laughs> My dear fellow, I have the first idea! Oh, but... I thought that's why you were here! Didn't you come back here to investigate? Ah, uh, yes, that was indeed my initial intention! But there are simply too many fascinating books here. I couldn't possibly ignore them. 
Oh, I see. Nevertheless, there are two facts that I can state quite unequivocally. My hopefully the scene of the crime two days ago was the Japanese occupant of this room, and there are witnesses who appear to have been seen the same man commit the crime. That is all I can say. Oh, and one more thing. Wait! What is it Mr. Sholmes tells us? I cannot say with any certainty whether or not this is is it relevant to this case, but I'm quite sure that the retired army man who owns this property is hiding something. Mr. Gardabes? Mr. Schultz says as much before actually, didn't he? I also, I also think that. Anyway, Prissy, that is really all that plays in my mind in relation to this case. Mr. Narujado, as general investigations have uncovered nothing that could help, help establish Mr. Natsume's innocence, no, you're right. Perhaps this time we can probe a little deeper into Mr. Garidab's secret. Just remember, I cannot be sure whether the landlord's secret will prove to be of relevance or not. But I wish you every so success, of course, Mr. Narudo. Hmm. A busy man indeed. He's going back to his book in the corner of the room. Oh, he really is. Excuse me, Mr. Schultz. Oh, yes, so true. Could be or not to be. He is reading. He is actually reading that. That is indeed the question, Mr. Narujudo. To be or not to be brushed off, that is the question. And the answer is all too clear. <sighs> Let's leave Mr. Schultz in peace, shall we? Oh, you pair again. Tell me, was the detective chap I forget his name still hard at work down there? Mr. Herlock Shops? Oh, yes, rings up like a big bell. All the detective business isn't really my thing, I'm afraid. Well, well, Mr. Shom is in his element down there. Jolly good show. Another cup of tea, if you please, John. Now then, why don't you tell me what- ah! <laughs> For the up 10 time, woman, will you watch what your belly will doing? I shall be serving dinner shortly, sir. Hmm? Ah, yes, of course. Rightfully rude of me, but I'm afraid I shall have to ask you to take your leave, if you'd be so kind. Oh, yes, of course. We are deeply grateful for all your assistance. Not at all, not at all. Don't get much chance to talk with John foreigners like yourself. It's been a pleasure. Best of luck and all that. Perhaps you could see yourself out. According to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Gary Depp is hiding something. No other avenues of investigation seem open to us at the moment. Perhaps we should do some thinking. And his wife. I knew that there was something not here. Whoa, 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 when did you come here? Ah, what's he doing over there? We met again, my dear fellows. But gracious, when did you sneak up in here? Here look shown, sir, at your service. Whatever were you doing by my window? I am given to watching this evening sky as the sun sits, madam. Oh, wait, wait, it was her. Whatever were you doing over by the window? Yet sadly, cheerful as the room of downstairs on the is, it lacks an aperture for such an observation. So I took the liberty of borrowing a small corner of space by the window up here. Well... Keeping an eye on... 
open a night to one's windows at dusk is the prudent thing to do in London, I'm gathering. Ah, and one other thing, Mr. Nedgudo. Oh, me? I thought perhaps you might be in need for certain great detectives. Great mind. Wait, he's not talking about... Is he? I didn't expect to be going through that again so soon. Yes, 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 yes! Do you mean Mr. Sholmes? There is a mighty secret in this modest room. I see even the most trivial of trifles. I take it you're prepared, Mr. Nerugudo? I think so! There is just time enough for one of the, my greatly admired great deductions. Let us conclude the matter before that. Go! I know what we're going to do with... Mr. Garidev. So it would seem that you are a military man of considerable distinguished service. Your standing as a landlord is more certainly not what one might call this rate. Mm? I'm afraid, sir, that it is all too clear to me. There are two conclusions I have been able to draw by careful observation of your living arrangements. I beg your pardon? The first is that even as we speak, you are concealing the presence of a furious beast in your care. And the second is that as a result of the beast's violent rampage, you have lost something very dear to you. <laughs> Mr. Narugado, look! The old man's broken out in a cold sweat. Unbelievable, it seems Mr. Shum's conclusion are I both spot on. Oh, how, how could you possibly? How could I possibly know? You mean to inquire? The answer couldn't be simpler, sir. For in the dense jungle of logic and reasoning, I am the king of the beasts. And I know only too well that wild beasts are not easily tamed. Two. Shall we begin? Once again, here look Chomps is proud to present. His logic and reason is spectacular. Here we go! A great deduction. I like this picture. Nature of the beast. It certainly shouldn't take a great detective to see. But a fearsome, but that a fearsome beast has been on the rampage of late when in these four walls. Thus we are faced with the question, what form might this beast take? A lion! Ah, oh, for a man with a military breeding, your eyes are uncommonly candid. I... Your furtive glance, Mr. Garidev, leads us directly to the answer. The train nature of the beast that has run rampant here is revealed to be the lion statue. Ugh. Yes, to an army man, you appear an imposing at best. A fact that has filled your admiration for the mighty lion, the king of beasts. What is this prayerful, I ask you? In the end, your admiration became so great, in fact, that you had a living, breathing specimen shipped from India, which you tried to keep in this very house. India? What? Yet living with such a wild beast proved more difficult than you can imagine. Charlie traces of a wild rampage are still very much in evidence. Well... Yet as we look around, the piece in question fails to present itself. Where could its angry creature have disappeared to? Madam? Me? I pray you do not consider me on chib on chivalrous. Explain to me with one glass in your direction. It is! Your dress pocket gives us a handsome clue as to the beast's whereabouts. For protruding from it, it's handbill and protecting a circus show. Oh! Yes, you said to dispose of this terrifying lion, Mr. Coritev. At Paris Circus! Traveling show currently sojourning in a nearby park. I have served days. Call the savage lion, sir. To the circus tour. I most certainly did not! I believe I have made my point. The fearsome beast which ran amok in this room was an Indian lion. 
Team will be sent to the circus now will reveal the time, prancing jubilantly through a ring of fire. That sounds dumb. A rampage in Asiatic Lion. Dear Lord, Iris is much better at this than you. Now, Mr. Caridae. It is plainly clear that you still have deep feelings for this formidable beast. Indeed, in the late powers, the distress this loss has caused you is, very, is veritable tangible. Your head weighs heavy on your shoulders. The pain you feel, you build by that support, you know. Actually, when he jumped up, I saw something on his right side. Taking it back, he has never shown that side. Anyway, should I mention that he looks like a freaking moon? Amid fits of tears, you that your beloved Lewis go. The strain of losing something so dear to you is, is clearly visible in your visage. Nonsense, man! I, I simply... But... What? But what must we must now ask ourselves is the true cause of this pain. And we need only follow the direction of the gaze to find the answer. Yes, it is the pile of pills that has given rise to the pain that you suffer. Every envelope contains another demand for payment. Oh! Oh, his glasses. For catalogs of meat, potatoes, wheat, and tea. Indeed, feeding your beloved has had a devastating impact on the financial circumstances of your household. And so you had no choice but to let it go. Yes, well, um, um. Now, in a final feat of rage, the precious beast carried out one last un unimaginable attack. Uh, unimaginable? Oh, oh, it's a candle. And it's a burn mark. That is what I was watching for. The aftermath of which can be clearly seen by observing the carpet over there. Very expensive wool and carpet, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, dear me! What could have caused such a destructive outburst? Um, this time around, I'm afraid it is you who has an event to reveal the truth to me. Your wondering eye has settled upon the answer very neatly indeed. Yes, to explain the dire state of the carpet, we can only look at the Tower of Kicks. What? Why? Oh! There is no creature more dangerous and deserves than I best with an unsatisfied appetite. Was it? Was it or was it not once said by a certain noble woman, if they have no bread, let them eat cake? Are you kidding me? They really make that reference? Food is at the heart of all tragedy, in fact. Whatever do you mean? Being tired of the taste of cake, this began to stalk in net spray. I'm sure I not need to spell out the nature of this final attack of the structure carried about the beast. There's only one logical conclusion. Walk into a frenzy by hunger, the lion attack and ate the carpet. What the heck is wrong with you? <sighs> the teeth marks on the carpet are a perfect match with those of lions I once saw in India. You're absolutely ridiculous! This concludes Herlock Sean's great deduction of this beastly puzzle. <laughs> what is the matter with you, John? Your parents called in hot tea all over me! Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Garden. I'm afraid I didn't notice. My deductions can be stunningly sharp. That's the reason that your cup run it over. Actually, I think that they were stupefied about how dumb that is. Indeed, my revelations can make people spill tears at times too. Oh, um. Um, Mr. Sholmes? Sorry to put in again. Could I make an observation? 
Well, certainly, Mr. Naruhudo, what do you say, the king? Well, your deductions just now. Do you really think a lion could have fit inside a room of this size? Indeed, it is the only explanation for the facts. The terrifying truth of law too often lies beyond the limits of common sense. But wouldn't we have to consider what lies inside the ruins of common sense as well? But, but in case Lion had run amok in this very room, surely Mr. Wakari and his mate would have been hurt, or worse. Ah, that's where you are stuck. No doubt the former military man held his own against the beast using that large cannon. Are you kidding me? I thought you said that they sold the lion to the circus. Well, what about the food? Meat and potatoes are one thing. But I don't believe I have ever heard of a lion that drinks tea. Oh, my dear suit, Mr. Tato. It occurs to me that with some regularity, that irrespective of race and breeding, whenever anyone lands on great British soil, they are infused with a highly appreciated taste for afternoon tea. Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? Are you crazy? What is wrong with you? Oh, man. What a glorious notion! Well then, Mr. Nerukudo, it's your turn to shine again. I had a feeling this was coming. Flat massage! So, Mr. Shown's reductions need. Can do it! Excellent. I've been waiting for my trusty partner introduction to step forward, Mr. Nerukudo. We don't even know yet whether or not this is going to help with Mr. Natsume's case. Still. Covering the truth is always worthwhile, whatever the motivation. At least that's what I want to believe. Let us start again. From the beginning of Herlock Jones, Logic and Reasoning Spectacular. Here we go. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Jones. It certainly shouldn't take a great effective to see that a fearsome beast has been on rampage of late with its more walls. Thus we are faced with the question, what form might the beast take? Ah, for a man with a military brain, your eyes are uncommonly candy. First in glance, Mr. Garrett, but let's just go to the answer. Your nature is dead. Yes, this is not it. I really didn't see the lion thing coming. No, but if you saw Mr. Garrett's reaction, you see, it rather seems as though some beast didn't read Ronamaka here in this room. Yes, something with a very fierce nature. But it couldn't have been a lion transported from India. So what was it then? We must follow Mr. Garrett's case. That will lead us to the true answer. Okay. Let's check this out. Well, this is the lion statue Mr. Sean picked out. Yes, I wonder. Perhaps if they live with a lion, it would prove to be a rather sweet companion. I think that's like a mouse trying to tell its family that the cat around the house is sweet. I suppose it is a bit of a flight of fancy, isn't it? Anyway, the beast we're looking for is something else. Let's have a good look around. These are shells from the cannon, are they? What a strange place to keep them. I imagine they have some significance to Mr. Karidev from his military time in the army. Ah, uh, of course, he mentioned a battle to us before, didn't he? Do you remember? Said he said he'd been shot in the knee. Perhaps this was one of these that hit him? If our own si hit that size had hit his knee, there'd be nothing left of it. Or Mr. Garrida, for that matter. Mr. Shun's Shanaf has a Persian slipper. And this man has suspended shells. Perhaps it's customary in Britain to display, well, rubbish on the mantelpiece? Whoa! What's this photograph? It appears to be from Mr. Garrett's wedding. He looks very happy, doesn't he? He does, but you can make out his pride. 
Oh boy. No, how unfortunate. Something must have struck the glass directly over the woman's face. Wonder what happened. Probably it's not too deep delve too deep to hear. This is what's happening when Mr. Caritek was still in the army. He seems to be carrying his ladder, rather stout bride effortlessly and beaming a smile all the time. I suppose he was very strong in his younger years. Hard to imagine now. The thin as a wreck. The glass is broken. You can't see the bride's face at all. But no amount of grass could hide the woman's plump form. I think powerful would be kinder than plump, Mr. Neruko, though. Yes, she certainly looks that. There's a lot of horse power there. Not so much you want to upset, that's for sure. Oh look! Have you noticed your wedding ring? It's very large, isn't it? Yes, that's an unusual design. It looks like some sort of belly sunflower. Take that! The true nature of the beast that has grown right by here is revealed by that newlywed bride. Precisely, Mr. Nerudo, no other explanation could possibly fit. Yes, this frame picture, this frame print pictures your wife, Mr. Garrett. And well, I mean the fact that her face is obscure. We can still make out her mighty arms and note the considerable horsepower they must contain. Ah, uh, um, indeed. Surely any woman of such powerful constitution would be honored to be described as a beast. Um, hon honor might be a stretch in a point. Too late! The fact remains that the beast, which so clearly established his rule, was your wife, Mr. Cardiff. Uh, uh, oh boy, that's actually a- Oh my god! That's her hand! The chain traces of a wild man, which are still very much in evidence. Well, yet as we look around, the beast in question fails to present itself. Where could this angry creature have disappeared to? Madam? <gasps> me? I pray you don't consider me unchival, Ross. But it's plain to me with one glass in your direction. I it is! <laughs> you just fucking give us a phantom clue as to where the beast is whereabouts. The poor, fragile, defenseless woman is beside herself. Well, I don't know what about... I don't know about fragile. Oh, dear. A anyway, Mr. Schultz is quite right. There's no sign of Mr. Caritab anywhere. But it seems there may be a clue as to her whereabouts. Look at this maid is trying to hide. wonder where Mr. Caritab's wife would, could be. Her, isn't it she? It's her. Yeah, it's her! She's not kidding. I mean, she's she's not tricking me. Also, what the heck? That's brutal. Do tightly your eyes to avoid even the chance of a giveaway. Push lips to prevent any secrets from slipping out. Round the cheeks to deflect any abuse that might be hurled her way. Yes, this is a nervously powerful woman, Miss Sato. It's your turn to phrase that it's a nerve Mr. Naruhodo. What a charming little teapot. What a charming little teapot. It's in pristine condition. Joan has been pouring some delicious fry and tea from it for, for Mr. Caridev, hasn't she? Well, not so much for Mr. Caridev. As on Mr. Caridev, wouldn't you say? I wouldn't dream of throwing attention to it. See what they have to say about the tickets it's comes. That certainly does appear to be a circus handbill poking out of her pocket. Ari Circus currently performing shows in a park not far from here. You don't think German Mr. Garda didn't sell his wife to the circus? Mr. Anu, how could you even say such a thing? Mm, I was only joking. Besides, what have gone with do you think he fed her to the pet lion? 
That's somehow worse! What do we have here? She's wearing a very large rings, look! Oh yes, a sunflower design with some rather nice embellishments. And it's on the ring finger of her left hand, which means it's sure my wedding ring. It looks like it's on there for life too. I can't imagine it will slide off a finger of the size. That's something to think, Mr. Nahuda, not to say. Do you know Mr. Gary the twice in the photograph had a, very ring, a ring very much like this one? It was a large sunflower design as well. Really? You have a great memory for these things. Hmm, a large sunflower wedding ring. What a coincidence that they have the same ring, isn't it? And finally, yeah. Take that! So she is a wife. Your wedding ring gives us a handsome clue as to as to the beast's current whereabouts. Oh! Indeed it does. That flowery band living on your finger gives you away. For the, it is identical to the one shown on the hand of Mr. Carter's sprite in this photographic print. In other words, you are no ordinary household maid. No. You are Mr. Garidup's lucky bride. You are Mr. Garidup herself. Oh my god! Well, jolly fine detectives. Detecting, sir. As you rightly surmise, this is the wife, Jess, my John. Rather let herself go, you might say, but she was a bully worker back. <laughs> okay, she call, he called her fat, so it makes sense. It would appear that you don't live in the most comfortable of circumstances. After all, you are a retired army man, yet you are in the business of printing out rooms. <sighs> I would assume, therefore, you have insufficient means to employ a maid. Would that be correct? It's not right, I'll tell you. I was second lieutenant of the third regiment. I has his pride, don't you know? My calling, it's a sort of thing that when a chap can't even afford to have a single man in his employ. Because of what he said. Yes, here in London, one is rather judge. A household cannot be considered worthy of society if it employs no stuff at all. Though in my, it's my considered opinion, such concerns about appearances are a folly. You mean Mr. Gareth Theft has his wife? Or cast his maid? Precisely. Am I right, Mr. Gardev? Only in company, obviously. But listen here. This must remain a secret. Tip top secret, please! The raging wife of Mr. Gardev. Yeah, the second part of this team is fantastic. Now, Mr. Carter, it is plainly clear that you still have deep feelings for this formidable beast. Indeed, in that life pose, the distress this loss has caused you is veritably tangible. Your head weighs heavy on your shoulders, the pain you feel being revealed by that sporting arm. Yeah, I know what it is. Mr. Sholmes is quite something. Is he still, call is he still calling Mr. Garrett that's why it's a bee? Yes, as a woman, that feels rather uncomfort uncomfortable. But Mr. Scarisab is standing beside her husband as we speak. In other words, he hasn't lost his beloved at all, has he? Oh, how true. So perhaps an unsupporting arm that seems to be propping up his head. No other significance there. According to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Garrett's pain is tangible, so. What could that pose of his really signify? Mr. Gareth certainly looks gone. According to Mr. Sholm's deduction, that's because he's having to endure the acute pain of losing something near to him. But we know that he hasn't lost his wife. But that means there must be an cause for the pain he's suffering. I need to check something. Whoa, really? A pipe. That's a very large pipe, isn't it? 
Yes, anyone who has something that says hanging out of his or her mouth on a regular basis is sure to have a serious chin like Mr. Gary there. But that's... what's that white pine around all about? Hmm. I'm surprised that it's only that. Oh my, look at that bright red mark! Gosh, that's quite something! I'm clearly made by somebody's hand! Yes, Mr. Garidev has been slapped on the face, it seems. Ah! I've never seen such a clearly defined mark. Whoever could have done such a thing? Well, there's a very limited number of candidates, I'd say. Your head weighs heavy on your shoulders, the pain you feel being repelled by the slap sheet. And of course, the delivery of that impressive mark on your cheek that refuses to fade. Was you, Madame John Garde? Well, yes. You have been desperate to hide that slap mark on your cheek, sir. <laughs> How the places! How did you work that out, man? Nothing escapes the notice of one trained in the art of observation, my dear fellow. That's why you haven't looked directly at us even once. To keep your other side from you. Well, um... Mm. Now, let us proceed to the next conundrum. Why were you subjected to such a violent slap? In other words, we must ask ourselves, what does Madame Garida have to fly into a rage? We need only follow the direction of your gaze to find the answer. Yes, it is a pile of pills that have given rise to the pain to suffer. I mean, it was not that. Didn't we say Sean say that the pills weren't all for lion father? Yes, but now we've established that the lion never existed. It can only mean that the thing responsible for building up all that food was Mr. Garrett's wife. Mr. Narajodoch, is that person not a thing? Yes, well, it's also a person who gave her husband a mighty slap around the face. I'm so hard that it left a perfect hand mark, in fact. Yes, why would a woman want to hit her husband with such force, I wonder? I'd love to know the answer to that question. Let's start with the books. There are a lot of books stacked up on the shelf here. Look! All novels that I've never heard of. Would it appear somebody has purchased them all from a second-hand bookshop? I think Mr. Gary said is something of a book lover. Looking at all these pills, it certainly amounts to a great deal of food. Meat and potatoes by the cardload, wasn't it? Well, looking at the two of them... You can tell immediately who eats the lion's share in this household. <laughs> well, at least we're no longer talking about an actual lion anymore. <laughs> ah, someone must be reading this book at the moment. There's a bookmark here, look! Mr. Garibet is clearly an avid reader. Oh, wait a minute! I don't think this is a bookmark. Oh no, it's so it isn't. It's a note. Note, written in a woman's hand. Oh, James, I love you. Cheers, Mary. Oh, look at the signature here. Lip marks, made with lipstick. Oh, what a passionate and romantic gesture. Don't get any of the ideas, Susan. Oh dear, I'm sorry. So this bookmark is actually a love note then. Hmm. Love note. Oh boy, this is very good. So this card that looks like it's being used as a bookmark is actually a love note? Yes, really? Oh James, I love you, yours Mary. But Mr. Garrett's first name is Joan, isn't it? Yes, I believe we may be heading into dangerous territory here. It's very conspicuous after all, isn't it? You mean the bright red lips next to the woman's signature? Yes, it's the first thing you notice, of course. And it rather makes your heart skip a bit. And broken plate. 
Oh dear, this plate has been smashed to pieces. And nobody seems inclined to tidy up the mess. Perhaps it's some sort of high alert. Really, Mr. Naruhoda? Well, anyone who has a cannon on display in their living room is clearly a little... Well... Centric. Yes, let's call it set length eccentricity. Take that! Love note, because it's obvious that she's jealous. Yes, is yes, it is this love note that has given rise to the pain you suffer. Oh, James, I love you. Cheers, Mary. Passionate indeed. <laughs> Perhaps the sender of this note, a certain Miss Mary, is the fly and the ointment here? Oh my god! But I don't know the Bali woman! You don't know her? That note wasn't written to me. It was just in the book. I don't know how it got here. It was just in there, you say? That's right. That's what I've been told! <laughs> A likely story! Now this ain't here, John, old thing. I split at the time. I bought the book in the second hand place, and that mo note must have must already have been in there. So the previous owner of so the previous owner of the book was using the note as a bookmark, you mean? That's right, that's what I mean say! <laughs> A likely story! For heaven's sake, woman, look at the name! It's written to James! My name, in case you've forgotten, is John! <laughs> A likely story! Are you questioning my name now? <laughs> and there we have it. I wrote a suspicion of the female heart, and you unleash a beast with a most fierce bite. Uh. Now, in a final fit of rage, the Furious Beast carried out one last unimaginable attack attack. Un unimaginable? The aftermath of which can be clearly seen by observing the carpet over here. A very expensive woolen carpet if I'm not mistaken. Oh dearie me! What could have caused such a destructive outburst? Madam, I'm afraid it is you who has inadvertently revealed the truth to me. Your wondering eye has settled upon the answer very neatly indeed. Yes, to explain the dark state of the carpet, we didn't only look at the Tower of Cakes. Wow, you know. No, Shones. But, you're like Mr. Gary said they didn't eat the carpet. No, of course not! But there doesn't seem to be any doubt that the state of disarray that this room is in is a result of her wild temper. No, that's true. Though this is the last part of Mr. Shop's deduction that we need to fix. We need only to follow Mr. Karasep's state, Mr. Karasep's case, that will lead us to the real answer. Alright, let's see what we can... Let's see what we can see. Yes. This is an advertising handle for the circus. What is circus? It's in a nearby park. Isn't this the same one as the one we saw earlier? The one that was folded up in Mr. Garidev's pocket? Perhaps they're very great circus lovers? Hmm... It couldn't be that the Hungry Lion is somehow involved again here, could it? Oh dear, I do hope not. <laughs> ah, so many cakes! Ah, is that all you can think about? Well, look at them, Mr. Naruhoda, there's a mountain of them, and they all look so delicious. It's more of a tower than a mountain, I'd say. It's a mountain, and it's my hope that one day, in our very homeland, I will be able to perform the tea ceremony at the foot of such a mountain. It's them for the tower. Okay, okay. Candlestick. This looks like a very old candlestick, doesn't it? The base looks too small. Surely it's very unstable. It looks to me even the slide that's not would make it topple over. 
Oh dear, that would be dangerous. Wait, we can look closer. Look at this. There's only one candle missing. Yes, I didn't notice that before. Why is that, I wonder? Why is one candle of the tree missing from its holder? Because this one is over here. The carpet here has been ripped to shreds. Yes, and according to Mr. Shum's deduction, the tears match those by made by the by an Indian line stick exactly. Oh, look here! What is it? You look closely at the edge, you can see scorch marks. Oh, yes, you can! In that case, perhaps the carpet wasn't eaten in the normal sense at all. Let's retain this with let us retain this with that in mind. And choose that candle over there. So the candlestick. Take that! Yes, to explain the dark state of the carpet, we know we need only look at the candlestick. Most illuminating, my dear fellow, and of course the only possible way of this logical labyrinth. Yes, the remnant of the ferocious attack in which the carpet was before are clearly visible. Indeed they are! Indeed they are! <laughs> the scorch marks at the edge clearly give the truth away. Scorch, scorch marks? It would appear that this room was the scene of a little marital altercation. <gasps> Mr. Gerardus' mighty armed muscles left an impression not only on her husband's face, but in the entire room. The force of a strike caused a candle to fall from the holder. And in seconds, and in seconds, the, car the carpet was up. Ooh. And in seconds, the carpet was a light and the whole corner of the room in flames. Yes, um, mm. For the most ferocious beast in this world is neither a violent lion nor a vengeful woman, but fire. And in this room, that ferocious beast buried its claws and ran amok. Eloquently put, my dear fellow, so you see, there is but one conclusion here. After the sparks of marital discord flew, this room was a scene of a fire. Oh, he's standing up. Mr. Sean, sir. I salute you! <laughs> <laughs> Production complete. I hope that this goes into a to be continued because I am so tired right now. It's this dash long winter's nights, you know. Nothing to do but read in front of a fire. Luckily, there's a Jolly God's second-hand bookshelf just around the corner. Buy all my old novels there. And in the pages of one particular novel, you discover some rather illicit material. For which your wife admonished you harshly. Don't know about admonish. Demolish might be more cl rather closer to the mark. And Beast is most certainly even a description! <laughs> Here we go again. And the carpet? Was that destroyed by fire when a candle fell on the floor? <laughs> right to say it was. Happened in, in the blink of an eye, you know. The whole place filled with smoke. Couldn't see a bully thing. I was caught between the old six rage and the raging flames. You paint the turret picture, sir. One that would have more been most entertaining. That's sympathy for you. Didn't I take long for the fire to spread? Of course! The valley furniture started going up as well. We've had to hide the mess behind the screen for the time being. Hmm, that explains a lot, but I wanna see now. Over here, Mr. Garida? Well, you have nothing more to hide now, if you'll allow me. What's behind there? Oh! Boy! And all my favorite old novels in that case. But as soon as the fire got hold of them, that was it. 
Whoosh! Up in smoke. Gosh! Then the wife started hurling things at me. What a terrible sight it must have been. There was I, back up against the window, under heavy enemy fire, and Sindiri books incoming ten to the dozen. What's of it is, that's my favorite. First of all, I lost my favorite book called The Lion's Pride. The Lion's Pride? Ah, yes, you're a terrorist loop of big cats coming through again. I assured you the title didn't influence my choice in the slightest! So the poor man really did lose something dear to him as a result of the very space rampage. His favorite book? Mr. Shum's deductions turned out to be correct once again! It can only be described as a great British wonder. I tell you, it was total carnage. Names everywhere and the old stick in the full pedal. Out of interest, what time of day was it? Hmm, not sure I can remember. It was two days ago now. Let's see. I think it was around 5 o'clock. So at exactly the same time, the terrifying incident was unfolding outside your window in the street below. Hmm, even more terrifying on the inside, I can assure you. The whole of Blighty. All of Blighty? Hidden? The whole of Blighty could have been flooding outside my window at that moment, and I would have noticed a dash thing. Oh boy. Really? Hmm. John. It actually changed from May to John. Hahaha. <laughs> Thunder. I have not even seen the big team now that I think about it. Um, Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. Neruda, what can I do for you? Well, I think we've got to the bottom of Mr. Garrett's situation now, but what does it have to do with Mr. Natsume's circumstances? I can help you there, I'm afraid. What? My dear fellow, if you recall, I did say as much from the outset. Weren't you that although I knew that retired army man to be hiding something? I could not be sure whether his secret would prove to be irrelevant or not. I... I just knew you were going to say that! <laughs> no, no, Mr. Neruda, you mustn't lose heart! Bear in mind that all things fall into only one of the only two categories. Relevant to the case, and those not. That takes, makes no sense to me. Well, no matter. It is of far greater importance that you make up your mind now. Sorry? Visiting hours at the prison will soon be over. Oh no, is it the time already? If it were to accept Mr. Natsume's case, we have official paperwork to attend to. So that's it. No more time to think. Perhaps you'd like to be take yourself to Baryno's farewell now. I must prepare supper for Mr. Myers. Sorry, that. Oh, oh, yes, I'm so sorry. Thank you very much for your time. Takisan san will be waiting for us. And I'm going to have to give him an answer. They are gonna have a very different conversation now. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Naruholo. Naruholo! But I'm afraid it's super time now. I have to ask you to leave. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. If we linger too long, Mr. Garrida will start pouring tea again. No one wants that. Alright, shall we go then? No doubt Mr. Soseki-san is beside himself in his cell, waiting for us to return. I can afford to spend any longer making up my mind. Dear lord, she made a mess. Hmm. Wait, what? It's time, Mr. Narujono. We must hurry back to the prison. 
Yes, I know. Let's heal a car. Oh? What's the matter? Looks like something's going on over here in front of the Gary Depp's house. Hmm? That is a sight to behold. Oh my god, what voice do I give this thing? I'm not even sure if it's a man or a woman. I know thee not, old man. Fall to thy prayers. Why'd you call it an old man, Jerome? Looking nimini bimini. There are more things in heaven and earth, Oratheon, than are dreamt of in your philosophy, Orat Oratheon. Horatio? Hmm, it may be from the 101 Del Del Dalmatians. Who's this Horatio fella? Huh? What are you on about? Oh. Excuse me. Huh? What the? Who are you now? I'm sorry. It just looks as though there might be some problem here. And my associate here, Mr. Yonosuke Narufado, the lawyer, you see. Uh, a lawyer? What? If I can be of any assistance, I'll be happy to help. I'm from Japan, but I have studied English, though. Two. Fine, I'll be on my way for today. You mark my words. It's an overjet. Get it to the nunnery. Do I look like a blooming nun to you? Ah, that guy is scary. I don't hope you're not injured. Oh, for Easter Maiden, you are so gentle, thank you! What was that all about? There are more things in heaven and earth around you than are dreams of in your philosophy! Uh, what the heck am I looking at? Um, I'm not the Ratheo either. Forgive the inquiry, sir, but... Are you a lodger here, in the Garrida residence? Oh, for Easter Maiden, you are so right! Yes, I do dwell in this humble abode! Mr. Garrett mentioned that he had an lodger, didn't he? This must be the man. You happen to know the other lodger who lives on the first floor? Oh, yes, a gentleman named Natsume. Oh, more worthy apologies in my battle of wars, near could there be. Sorry, battle, did you say? Who is the strongest? Hamlet or Macbeth? Oh, oh, he's an actor? Okay. Mr. Natsume and I spark long into the night. I see. I, I don't fully understand, but it seems Mr. Natsume and this gentleman are acquaintances at least. Oh, so forbidden! So good, gentlemen! I can tarry here no longer! Fare thee well! I didn't really understand him, but I think he's returned to his room. Seems that he's unaware of what's happened to Mr. Natsume. So he can't really help us. With Suzuki and that man as lodgers, the Garrett house is certainly full of eccentrics. Anyway, I'll go find a I'll go and find a carriage. Yes, Mr. Natsume is eagerly waiting a return. Let's hope we can get to the prison before we see hours are over. I wasn't going there. This stream has been long, so I don't remember what voice I gave this guy. It's you, you're here, you came! Welcome, student Mr. Naru for the Squire! I can't believe you came back! I'm so touchy! We are so sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Natsuma. Oh, no, 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 think nothing of it, relax! If I were a car, I would put with pleasure at the company of such fine compatriots! Double, nurturing, never failing, Nipponese! <laughs> oh, now let's not get carried away. Oh. Who could it be? Is it Parok Pan 6? Oh, I quite agree. There is nothing more reassuring than the, f than the familiarity of one's native land. On the other hand. Oh boy! I completely butchered his lines. 
Oh, I quite, oh, I quite agree. There is nothing more reassuring than the familiarity of one's native land. On the other hand, it is true friendship transcending international borders that one truly appreciates the fact. Such is my belief, at least. Oh, it's Jezza! It's you! The miserable rodents by her luck Shones! Mr. Shones, what are you doing here? I have no intention of doing anything, Percy. Save observing, of course. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Shones? Well, having encountered some curious reading material in the Gloomful room, and having unmasked the secret identity of that eccentric pair, I decided I should drop in on my way home to see how our domestic friend is faring. Gloomful room? At least your accommodation here offers a window, my dear fellow. In that sense, it is a superior option. Anyway, I must commend you on your tasting books. My day has been a delight of and cost me not a penny. Ah, you! How dare you, Herlock Sholmes! Oh. I'm hearted. I'm through. I'm at the end of my rope. I should never have come to Great Britain. It was a terrible mistake. Haunted by spirit and those accursed lodging. No doubt my luck will be cursing tomorrow's trial as well. My whole life is bedamned! What are you thinking, Mr. Narujudo? You mentioned that once before, didn't he? That his lodgings were cursed, I mean. And there is much truth in Mr. Mustache's words. What? First is a surely appropriate description, I would say, for the man's lodgings, and indeed, for tomorrow's trial. What's that supposed to mean? I'm gonna go back for a moment because I wanna see if he has anything else. Nope, she's still writing. I know it's kinda weird, but I just was wondering. He says, yes, this is a symbol for Grand Prix, which means you're still by my side, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Mr. Natsume, would you take this in? Oh, the joy, the sheer joy of a gift from my fellow countrymen! The complete kindness of kid and kid! <laughs> oh, no, sorry, I just wanted to show you. The complete cruelty of kid and kid! <laughs> Oops. We found this recipe in your room, Mr. Natsume. That's right, and went out to buy some new old books. Isn't that a contradiction of in terms? Wait, what? I went to buy some new old books. Okay. And it wasn't your way back to your room that you saw the woman being stabbed? She's dead, I thought to myself. She's dead! My mind went completely blank. Before I knew it, I was back in my room, trembling like a leaf. The bookworm hoping to worm his way out of a bad situation. Hmm, Mr. Narujo, though, please do be careful not to think such disparaging thoughts. How could you possibly know? Mr. Natsume, what did you mean by what you said just now? Mother trial tomorrow being cursed. Oh no! Why? Why are you looking so grave? You're making me nervous. We're just getting carried away. That's all. I didn't mean anything. Uh, I was just carried away. That's all. I didn't mean anything by it. Oh, I see. That's really agitating him. You don't mean the trial is cursed somehow. Are you referring to the prosecutor? The Reaper of the Bailey? To the Reaper? Oh no, what do you mean? Please tell me Summers had only playing 16 selling wars! No defendant has ever survived a trial in which the Reaper stands for the prosecution. Ever. 
Whoa, that was actually 16 words! Oh my goodness, can it really be true? That was 16 words exactly! Yesterday, Mr. Naruhodo successfully defended someone against the Reaper. But then, after the trial was over, the defendant passed away in initial circumstances. Mr. McGilded. What? Oh, I'm, imp I'm impressed, Mr. Sato. You have an eye for detail. Actually, the Lord Chief Justice told us. Mr. Sholmes, surely it can be that having failed to have the accused convicted, Lord Ben Six killed the man himself? Oh no, he couldn't have. Surely. <laughs> you have some wonderful notions. Sorry? The man is in a mass murder. The cool prosecutor, my dear fellow. Oh, yes! Why? Of course he is! Uh, of course he is? Then why are you trying to scare me? It could be said, however, that the real truth about the man is even more terrifying than your hypothesis. What on earth did you mean by that? I love that thing. Ben Six is a quite exceptional man. However, in London, courts of law, exceptional does not equate to winning every case without exception. Oh, that's good. The can looks, San looks like he's going to try tears of joy. As you are no doubt aware, in British criminal trial, there's both a judge and a jury. The judge officiates based, based on the letter of the law, while the judge offers public opinion and common sense. It is, an, it is an excellent system where the defendant's skills is considered from several points of view. However, public opinion in particular is somewhat easily manipulated. Right. Criminals and corrupt lawyers for that matter can use it to their advantage. By any means at their disposal, contriving evidence is calling imposters as witnesses, and so on. By such underhand means, those who would want to are able to sway the jury. Which means that even in the light of irrefutable evidence, the prosecution can still fail. But it means that Ron Berlin can be passed! And sadly, it's from time to time, my dear madam. It is simply the reality of the situation. And that's all right! However, those indicted by Lord Band 6 cannot escape justice. Their fate is sealed. Oh, oh my! But the adjudication may see them leave their quorum with their freedom. Within months, they all disappear. It is most striking. Disappear? But but how? Oh, by all manner of misfortune, sir. Perhaps they are trampled under a passing carriage. Perhaps they fall into the taint and drow. Perhaps they are suddenly overcome by a raging fever. Or perhaps died by a high wave moon. Oh, no, 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 no! Only example of the reality of events here in London, I'm afraid, Mr. Nerubido. <laughs> I knew it. I... A dead turtle top for doomed! <laughs> I'm... completely scared about when this is going. When you said a curse lodgings here uh, before, you were referring to your room in Mr. Garadev's house, I assume? You meant to say that you believe the place is cursed? It's been a year now since I came to Great Britain. But I'd only been in London a week before I started to notice strange feelings in myself. That didn't take long then. Everywhere I looked, there were foreign faces staring at me, laughing behind my back. But sure people were talking about me, I started to become nervous about going outside. Wait, paranoia? They were always staring at me, all the time, from dawn till dusk. So I shut myself away in my room. But even that didn't help, the fear wouldn't go away. 
She must have been very lonely having been away from your homeland for such a long time. Had to move a number of times. Most listen to that room in Briar Road a week now. Yes, why did you choose there? It's a little inconvenient. The rent is cheap. I have some little money and I call me straight away. Of course I asked why it was so affordable. The landlord just simpered and said, The room is cursed. Oops! He quickly tried to cover her mistake, but it was too late. So I told him, If you have something to say, then say it! But if not, don't mention it in the first place! Yes, well said. But it was true! It was all true! You mean, the room really is cursed then? Which is a moment that the windows were less all whole. My sleep has been planned with nightmares. I will feel as though I'm being choked to death. In my waking hours, people are stabbing in front of me as I walk down the street. I'm rather a killer, thrown in prison. Nobody wants to know me. I'm... I'm... Surrounded by scary sinister spirits. If only there was someone. Just one person at my side. And no one find it in his heart or heart to believe me. Really no one at all? I feel so bad for him. To believe. Just... To believe. This is gonna involve Ka uh, Kasuma, right? Um, Mr. Sholmes? Um, you Mr. Nerukudu? Really, what can I do for you? What about the case on the SS Buria? If you recall? The Buria, the Buria! Ah, that case! The one with the snake? Well, yes. At the time I was a suspect. But you believe in me and listen to my side of the story. And you help us to investigate. I did, did I? Interesting. What I want to know is... Why, why did you believe in me? I see, yes, you mean. Because you were a grimly dressed, shady eastern fellow found with the victim in a loot room? Um, well, if you like... Yes. I'm a little surprised at the answer it requires explanation, my dear fellow. It is quite simple, really. You said I didn't do it. But I could have been lying. Surely you must have had your doubts. You must have sus suspected me a little. I think perhaps you might have misunderstood. I neither recall believing in you, nor in that which you were telling me. What? You see, the only things I believe in are those I choose to believe in. What do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? I make up my own mind about what is to be believed and what is not. If I should like to believe in something, I do. Circumstances can hang as far as I can be concerned. But I could have betrayed your trust. <laughs> in that case, I should have made an elementary error of judgment, nothing more. The trail of trust is an overused excuse, in my opinion. Meaning? Whether or not one should trust another is, in the final an analysis, down to oneself. It's a matter of whether or not one can trust oneself. Yes, yes, he's right! He's right, welcome student Mr. Aroha the Squire! Whether or not I can believe in myself. A defense lawyer is. A defense lawyer is only as good as he's fading his client. And that comes down to how much faith has in himself. Oh wow, it is a good thing that I replayed chapter one after all. You were so right, Casper. Well, my dear fellows, it is time we were leaving, I believe. Already? We see the hours are over. The world, the guard will be here shortly to start out. There is a restaurant near here that serves excellent trout. Would you care to join me? Hmm. Oh dear. Oh dear, there's never enough time here. Um, Mr. Natsume, if you'd like, in the trial tomorrow, 
I'd be happy to represent you. Lokum stood in Mr. Naruho the Squire! As I said, I only experienced a British Corman for the first time yesterday. And although the man I was representing was found not guilty, I lost sight of something crucial. Something crucial? What to believe in? The defendant, justice, or the truth? How to believe it in? But I think I finally worked it out. I decided I must believe in myself above all else. Trust my instincts. Just Mr. Naruhodo. And my instincts are telling me that you, Mr. Natsume, are innocent of this crime. And it's imperative that we prove that in court. Now comes to the Mr. Naruhodo Squire. I will fight for your innocence until the bitter's end, with every weapon available to me. I hope you'll permit me to represent you tomorrow. As I said when we first met, I'd like to entrust my faith to someone who will listen to me in my native tongue. Of course, Mr. Natsume. Of course, Mr. Natsume. It will be fair to say, Mr. As I said the first time we met, I can trust the faith to someone who will listen to me in my native tongue. Of course, Mr. Natsume. It would be fair to say, Mr. Neruhudo, that your mind was in many ways made up from this outset. You merely needed the events of today to fully realize it. Yes, I think you're right about that. It's been a roundabout journey, but I got there in the end. <laughs> Isusato? Yes? Would you be willing to stand by my side tomorrow and help me in cart? Absolutely. As I said this morning, you may consider me your personal judicial assistant. The shocking events of yesterday's trial still weigh heavily on my mind, but it's time to stop looking backwards. Kasuma believe in me, and Mr. Schultz believes in me now too. So it's time. Time that I learn to believe in myself. Zaki-san has no one. He's all alone! It's my job to help him, to fight his corner. Tomorrow in the country, with all the strength I can muster! We continue. These two episodes have been quite interesting. I still have no clue what happened here. But at the very least, I'll say for today. The Adventure of the Clouded Kokoro. Next time, we're gonna continue with this. You can see I don't actually know when they are this time's next. But I want to keep doing it. And I know that some of you are watching. Maybe not right now. Maybe later. And I do appreciate it. I really like the fact that sometimes I get some likes in my, in my stream. And that actually makes me very happy. Thank you for everything. Now, good night. And, well, I need to arrange this. See you later. Everybody, goodbye. Oops, that was not what I need.